Flood Series, the last chance to settle the score. My dream is to blindside a quarterback and just, just rip his head off and just throw it on the side. Auburn is thinking revenge. The Seminoles have had their number, while win number 200 is on Bobby Bowden's mind. It's been a constant for eight decades. Orange and crimson clashing. Play from Shockey, the A's in four straight in the World Series. If you missed it last night, Cincy clobbering Oakland 8-3, to three, a pair of homers for Chris Sabo. Now in game four, as the Reds go for that shocking sweep, the game one starters, Jose Rio and Dave Stewart, will go tonight in Oakland. For the third straight season. Notre Dame's month on top was preserved by heaven-sent bounces like the one into the hands of Adrian Gerald that set up a last-minute win at Michigan State. But against Stanford two weeks ago, the hand of fate took back the favor as a game-winning pass bounced off the hands of Derek Brown. Back to pass, Meyer, rolling right. Looking upfield, protection breaking down, throwing for the goal line for the tight end. He can't hold it, it's incomplete. The game's over. Brown so Michigan became the first once-beaten team to grab the top spot this early in the season. It took six days, a gutsy Michigan State team, and a badly blown call to wipe out the Wolverines' dreams. Gerbeck from inside the five, back to pass, throws it is, caught and dropped, caught and dropped. It is no good, no good, no good to Desmond Howard. So yes, Virginia, you are ranked number one. Now the task of handling the weekly pressure. The road to a New Year's Day showdown for the national championship contains only one large obstacle, a home date with unbeaten Georgia Tech in two weeks. An upset by the Yellow Jackets would vault them into the top six or seven and make them a good bet to go unbeaten into the Citrus Bowl. But it's almost certain that they need some help on New Year's Day to win it all, even with a 12-0 record. There are seven teams with imperfect records still ranked higher than Tech. Two of them, the Canes and the Irish, face the elimination from the chase with a loss or a tie today. If Miami wins, their biggest test might be next week's road trip to Texas Tech. Their three future Big East buddies, Pitt, BC, and Syracuse, don't figure to challenge Miami in the Orange Bowl, where the Canes have won 33 straight. Lou Holtz says his team is not a national title contender. Sure, he's sandbagging, but he also knows the Irish face a road finale against USC and a daunting date with the unbeaten Volunteer Army in Knoxville November 3rd. As for the Vols, ranked third at 4-0-2, a win over the Irish would leave a meeting with Ole Miss as the biggest hurdle to part in the New Year's Day drama. Number five Auburn needs to conquer the state of Florida, the Seminoles tonight, and the Gators in Gainesville. They also probably need a Tennessee loss, since the Sugar Bowl almost always takes the highest-ranked team in case of an SEC tie. Nebraska has climbed to number four and wins over Colorado. And Oklahoma would put them in the Orange Bowl with a chance to play for it all, or maybe back into it with a loss by Virginia elsewhere. Unbeaten Houston won't be anywhere in the postseason, but the Cougars' probation makes them a wild card contender. Would 11 or no in the clubhouse be good enough if chaos reigns in the bowls? Probably not, but don't rule it out in this crazy season. Illinois and Washington. When the Seminoles were handed their scalps by Miami. Bobby Bowden's club has had a much-needed week off to rebound because it travels into one of the most difficult places to play in college football, Auburn's Jordan-Hare Stadium. But if anybody can conquer the Auburn dominance at home, it's the Seminoles of Florida State, the last team to beat the Tigers at Jordan-Hare. It was a convincing 34-6 smashing on Auburn's home turf three years ago. But since then, Auburn has gone unbeaten in 19 games at home. And like the Seminoles, a loss would take Auburn out of the national championship picture. The Tigers' running attack should be a key here. The Tigers are expected to run right at that Seminole defense, a defense which features only two senior starters. And after all, wouldn't you try and take advantage of a unit which has given up more than 100 points in five games? I would. That's what I would do if I was them. I mean, they see the film, they're bound to like what they saw. And they've got a veteran offensive line that can really block. And they've got big veteran running backs. I think that's what they'd like to do no matter what. I've played against them three times in my college career, and um, I've came up as a lo on the losing end um, all three times. So, uh, you know, it's a definitely a motivating game for me, and I know for the rest of the seniors, because it's our last chance to win against Florida State. It is the biggest game of the year for us, because if we lose, that's probably not going to that national championship picture. And if we win, that'll put us back in it. Pretty much sums that up, Danny. Pat Dye has never lost four straight to any school during his coaching tenure. How do you see today's games right. matching up? Well, as you just stated, since 19, since 1987, when Florida State thrashed Auburn 34 to six, you got to figure 
Auburn's won, what, 19 straight home games? But there is a blemish there. That was against Tennessee. They had a tie against Tennessee. Florida State, they definitely have the better athletes, Dan, but their problem is 24 of their starting 44 are either freshmen or sophomores, and that inexperience factor has hurt Florida State. They've had injuries to the defensive line. That's also hurt the Seminoles. Auburn's defense to win this game must play better than it did against Tennessee, and they have to let, they being Auburn, they have to let their offense wear Florida State down with the running game. Auburn's offense is led by freshman Stan White, and that's why I like Auburn. I don't think that Auburn can play catch-up ball, and again, they must punish. Auburn has basically no passing game, so they must punish Florida State. The winner has gone on to the national title four times. Three times it's been Miami. But after today, the series will become merely a memory. The Hurricanes, the Irish, hot blood or hearts and flowers? Depends on whether the cameras are rolling. You know, they're, they're a great bunch of guys. You know, you, I feel that, you know, we could go out and have a good time with them off the field. I know a couple of guys on the team, but, you know, anytime you play anybody, a, a team like this with, with as much talent as they have, you have to give them much respect. Hard to believe after studying the recent history. In 85, Jimmy Johnson's cane showed no mercy. A 58-7 humiliation in Jerry Faust's final game. 88, the Irish prevail. After the infamous pregame brawl and a dubious fumble call killed one Miami drive, the Irish survived by breaking up a two-point conversion. Last year, Miami crushed Notre Dame's dreams of repeating as number one. In front of a delirious Orange Bowl crowd, it was 27-10. The decade saw an incredible 70 players who are now in the NFL battle in the Canes Irish Series. And it all ends today, thanks to Notre Dame's philosophy of rotating opponents. We've taken two of the best football teams, if not the two best programs in the last four or five years, who have played each other, which has become the game in college football. Now we don't play any longer in the regular season. And to me, it's a, it's a tragedy. I would like to have gone down there one more time. If I had a regret, I would like to have gone down there one more time. We just hope that we can win, you know, and have black and rights for eternity, basically. Our seniors want to go out, want to play hard, and, and have a big win against them and be able to you know, have that bragging right for the rest of our lives. Not merely bragging rights, but the right to fight for the national championship is at stake. And with both teams already once beaten, this final battle means more than ever. We have to get over this hump. There's, there's no tomorrow if we lose. With two losses, I mean, you're out of contention for a national championship, really, unless some crazy things happen again. Um, I just think we do have to come away with a win this weekend to keep our goals in mind. It is the kind of confrontation that makes injuries insignificant. Bone Spurs make just walking agony for Miami's Russell Maryland, but he will take his position in the trenches. Notre Dame is the cure of all ills, you know, for our team. Nobody gets hurt that, this week. As for all that lovey-dovey stuff, forget it when toe meets leather. History and circumstance have a way of bringing bad blood right to the surface. I think it's, uh, it's there's just a sleep right now. But when we get up there, I think it's going to boil right back up. You step out on the field, you lose that respect, and then you just try to go out and you know, be upon your guy. Believe me, words will be spoken. Maybe not in the newspaper or on camera, but on the field of play. You can believe that. Now it's mid-turn time. Must win number 200 at Auburn. Or watch his title hopes slip away again. Game day coming back in a minute. Now Cook gets his chance to talk about the causes of the game. But there was one small problem. It was fifth down. Never has a fuss been raised over a fifth like this since Prohibition. And on the same day in Columbus, Ohio, Illinois threw a forward pass for a touchdown, except there was one obvious problem. The pass was thrown over the line of scrimmage. The same officials moved to Ann Arbor, Michigan the next week, and there was a mugging in the end zone. Michigan lost 28 to 27. There was no dead body, but there will be no national championship for the Wolverines. See it every week. I mean, everybody see it. You see it on TV, you see it every week. Philosophy of officiating, don't throw your flag. Some of you guys don't even need a flag. Just don't throw it. You got no call, don't throw it. Don't throw it, don't throw it. Now everybody wants instant replay, and everybody's crazy. You can't have instant replay during the regular season for one simple reason. It's too expensive. We can't have 
instant replay. There's no way you can have instant replay because to have instant replay, the game has to be covered by TV. Uh, college football is not possible to do that because all games are not televised. Even in a conference, you would have to have all games televised with the same number of, uh, of cameras to, uh, to do that, to make it fair for everybody in the conference. If you want to have instant replay in the bowl games, especially if a game's for the national title, that makes sense. But I'm old-fashioned, and I don't think a college football game should take longer than a miniseries. But here are some random thoughts on officiating. Set up a central office. Pay a few people. Heck, you're charging people $20 to $30 to see a football game. Pay a few bucks and have a group of people as signed officials for football games and say you can't officiate the same team more than once every two years. Well, obviously, officials make mistakes. Uh, we all make mistakes, and uh, uh, it's, it's regrettable that it happens, but uh, I think it happens in all sports. I think it's part of the territory. It's part of the game. So with all the yelling and screaming about officiating, remember two things. Officials are human, and it's only a game. The SEC nemesis, seven straight against the conference. He'd love to win his 200th career game right here. A lot of his relatives are Tiger fans, and they're going to be there tonight. Pat Dye has never lost to anyone four straight years, but he's lost three straight to FSU. How much does this one mean? Terrell Buckley knows. It is the biggest game of the year for us because if we lose, that's probably not the side national championship picture. If we win, that'll put us back in it. Tonight, the young Knowles will need to show more fire early than they did against Miami when they fell way behind. Bobby Bowden coached conservatively against the Canes, but he's had two weeks to cook up surprises for Auburn. FSU teams have always been able to score better than anyone against the Tigers. Their concerns are on defense, where they face Auburn's newfound passing prowess. Stan White, a redshirt freshman, is throwing for about 290 yards per game. But tailback James Joseph is healthy now, and the Seminoles surrendered 349 yards on the ground to Miami. So look for Pat Dye to reemphasize the run. If, if I had my choice, Sure, I'd hand it off and we would run it uh, 75 times a game and throw it none. Is he going to be able to play that old-time Auburn football today against FSU and Listen, win? I agree with Pat Dye. In fact, <laughs> if I was coaching Auburn, I'd right run the ball every single time against Florida State's interior line. On defense, they're young and they're hurting. But watch Auburn to win this game by faking those runs and throwing over the top for touchdowns. You know, before that game on ESPN, we'll have the Crimson Tide and the Volunteers. Playing like Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and jumping like Michael Jordan. Watch the athletic ability up in the air. Hit as he catches the ball, turns almost completely upside down, and hangs on to it. Woo! I'm not even going to say anything else. I'm just going to watch. Third down, Michigan. Eight yards to go. 59 to nothing over Akron. Bud Light and Bud. Let's get out to Jordan Hare. Auburn waiting in the wings. Thanks so much, Tim Brando. You know, when a youngster makes up his mind to sign with an Auburn or a Florida State, it's nights like this that help him make that decision. Two members of the nation's top ten. A game with national title hopes on the line. It's the seventh-ranked Seminoles against the fifth-ranked Tigers. It's a Saturday of survival for two teams with designs on a college football championship. Over the last three seasons, no team has come closer to a national title than Florida State. In 1990, Bobby Bowden's Seminoles are knocking on the door again. The Pat Dye decade at Auburn has been one of sheer excellence, but now the Tigers hope to finally claw their way to the top. Both teams have suffered a jolt on the road to number one. Now nothing less than perfection will do, or the journey comes to an end. Jordan Hare Stadium in Auburn, Alabama, on this elimination Saturday in college football. Let's show you what has happened with the AP Top Ten so far today. Number one, Virginia has won. Miami has been upset. Tennessee has been upset. Nebraska wins. Of course, Auburn and Florida State here tonight. Number six, Notre Dame will move up. Illinois is victorious. Houston wins. And Michigan has been upset by Iowa today. 
everybody. I'm Ron Franklin, and welcome in to an absolutely super college football night again here on ESPN. With the games we've been having on the Saturday night primetime telecast, it kind of reminds me of the old radio broadcaster that used to cup his hand over his ear and say, and the hits just keep on coming, because that's the way it's been, and tonight should be no exception. We've got two clubs that were dominant in the decade of the 80s, but the one thing that eluded both of these ball clubs was a national championship. Gary Danielson joins me again on the telecast tonight. And Gary, by golly, what's going to happen is whoever loses this tonight is going to be saying, get them next year as far as the national title. No doubt about it, Ron. You know, Florida State, though, a little younger. And I think they'll be a better football team next year than they are this year. But they were shocked into reality last week when they faced Miami. And really the feeling down at Florida State was they lost a little poise. And Bobby Bowden took care of that. to me like he's looking for a couple guys to step forward and be the couple leaders and he's going to need more than just a couple if he can do it in this place tonight down here in Auburn. You know one of the things leadership is not a problem for Auburn University. They have senior people in key positions and one of the things for the Seminoles is they have some young people in some key positions. Well, this Auburn team, a lot of veterans, good senior leadership. They've won three straight SEC championships. But the word down here all week is they don't remember that. They remember losing three state times to Florida State. And in the back of their mind, they remember the end of last game when they were taunted a bit. And they will be very focused, and they'll be ready to lay some leather on everybody tonight. Well, it is the second year of a 10-year contract between these two clubs. ESPN's College Football Saturday, Florida State versus Auburn, is brought to you by Jordan Hare Stadium filled to capacity and down on the stadium floor. The visitors from Tallahassee, Florida. Here come the Seminoles. to the telecast tonight down on the field level. Let's go to Kevin Kiley. Thank you, Ron. An unbelievable crowd down here. 51-year-old Jordan Hare Stadium, a definite home field advantage. Only eight times in Pat Dye's 10 years have the Tigers lost here. It's a very special place for Auburn players, past and present. I mean, no matter what the coaches did to the prepare, or no matter what you've done all your life, it's like like being born again. I mean, I guess a Christian would say it's the most memorable experience of his life. That's what you feel when you go through a, a Jordan Hare thing. It's like starting all over. No matter what you learn about pressure and no matter what you learn about crowd noise, it all just blanks out. You feel like you're in, a, in the best place in the world. I mean, you love that atmosphere. The intensity down here is incredible. Only one time in the last 20 games as Auburn lost the game here. Who was it to? The Road Warriors of Bobby Bowden, Florida State in 1987. It is absolutely jumping in this joint. Ron, back to you. Okay, Kevin Kiley, thanks so much. There he is, the head of the Road Warriors, Bobby <laughs> Bowden. His road record, 58 wins, 67, almost 68 percent since coming to Tallahassee, Florida as the head coach. And on the other side of the field, the former Georgia Bulldog in his 10th year, now with Auburn. 85, 25, and 3, a winning percentage, 76.8. They are standing at Jordan Hare, and for a goodly part of the evening, don't be surprised that they never sit. Florida State will kick off to Auburn. Richie Andrews, a senior from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 5'11", 165 pounds. 
Herbert Casey, Alex Smith, and Pedro Cherry are the three deep men for the Auburn Tigers. Casey is a sophomore from Foley, Alabama. Averaging almost 28 yards per return. Tickets in this stadium for the students is first come, first serve. Two and a half hours ago, when the gates were opened, they came storming in, and they have not been sitting and not quiet since. Here's the kickoff. And now for tonight's diehard starting lineup. At quarterback, the redshirt freshman from Birmingham, Stan White, Tony Richardson, also a freshman, and James Joseph, the running backs. The wide receivers, Greg Taylor and Shane Wasden. The tight end is Victor Hall. Up front, and they're good ones, all of them. Bob Meeks is the center. The two guards, All-American Ed King and Tim Tillman. At the tackles, Wayne Gandy and Rob Selby. White. Throws on first down, has Wasden complete at the 26. Defensively, the starters for Florida State, Joe Ostazuski at nose guard. The tackles are McIntosh and Troy Sanders. The outside backers, Anthony Moss and Howard Dinkins. Marvin Jones, he is a great young freshman, and Kirk Carruthers, the inside backers at the corners, Errol McCorvey and Terrell Buckley, and Bill Riggins and John Davis are the safeties. to the 28-yard line. Well, I have to say I'm a tad surprised that Auburn comes out throwing the football. They haven't tested run at all, have they? The word was all week by all the experts that are supposed to say it was, well, they'll come out and just try to run. Miami ran for over almost 350 yards the last game. Florida State teed it up, and all of a sudden Auburn comes out, throws two passes. That's an old thing when you got a good horse riding. <laughs> he loves Stan White. your first run. James Joseph cuts it back to the right and out to the 33-yard line. Defensively, Marvin Jones from that strong inside linebacking position. Well, if they're successful throwing the ball early, Ron, that'll just open up those holes, as you know, and they will be successful running the ball. All week, Florida State worried about stopping the run, and he comes out and throws two passes. I like the game plan so far. Seventy-five yards. That's second in the Southeastern Conference. Joseph, and this time there is nothing doing. Marvin Jones, number 55, one of the first men to come up and make the stick. That time Auburn went a little bit on balanced line, and they're going to try to run the ball at this man, Kirk Brothers, a preseason All-American pick in some people's minds. Had some tough times earlier this year, but he weaved through everybody and made the stop on that. Kirk, from East Lansing, Michigan, goes about 205, and everybody thinks we're going to run the ball at Kirk. Let's see if he can up to the task. was Dinkins a jump for a moment got back on time Joseph can't turn the corner and he's going to be knocked down for a loss Anthony Moss is the guy who turned the play inside and that's excellent defense by the Seminoles and now it will be third down and for Auburn they need the 43 and a half that time Florida State put an eight-man front on them it's a version of the bear defense they put their two linebackers out wide they're going to crash in and try to blow up that running game with two wide linebackers 44% this season on third down conversions for the Tigers. Draw play to Joseph. Puts a head down and with that, still not going to have the first down. It's Kirk Carruthers who he challenged and did not win. One of the things I don't think Pat Dye wants to do, he'd like to open up this ball game, but I don't think he wants to make an early mistake and give the game to Florida State. That was third and long. He called a little bit of a conservative play, a draw. He'll punt the ball and see the way Florida State wants to handle it. Richie Nell with his 18th punt of the season. Florida State had pressure on him. This is Buckley. Fair catch at the 24-yard line. 
The starters for the Seminoles, Brad Johnson out of Black Mountain, North Carolina quarterback. He'll have Amp Lee and Edgar Bennett behind him at the running back spot. Shannon Baker and Lawrence Dossie, the wide receivers. The tight end, Dave Roberts. Up front, Robbie Baker is the center. The guards, Hayward Haynes and Robert Stevenson. And the tackles, Reggie Dixon and Kevin Mancini. Virtually the same offensive group that started against Auburn last year. Bennett and boy does he get whacked down by Crawford and also Ramsey here are the starters for the Tigers defensively Walter Tate is the nose guard the defensive tackles Fernando Harn is starting tonight along with David Rocker Larry Young and Ricky Sutton the outside backers at the inside Carrick and Cunningham and Daryl Crawford the cornerbacks Eric Ramsey and Corey Barlow and the safeties Dennis Wallace and John Wyatt Florida State keeps the ball on the ground and the junior out of Jacksonville takes it forward to around the 32. Cunningham and Tate combining. Florida State is trying to be a little bit more diversified in their attack. They're trying to get it to their backs, to their tight ends. One of the things that Wayne Hall, defensive coordinator for Auburn, said, though, is they're throwing a little bit more than usual. He suspected they would change up for them, though, and try to run the ball, and he's right so far. Seminoles need two. Bennett, very close. I don't think he got it. Barlow is the man who made the really fine one-on-one -on -one hit in the flat. And from where they've marked it, he'll miss it by a half yard. This was third and short, Ron, and what Florida State tried to do was to take this man right here, the tight end, and come in and pick for the fullback out of the flat. Watch the play. He'll come in and pick. Watch it get in the way. But the other pursuit, Auburn was in a zone and got away with a good defensive call. Flag has been thrown. Overton makes the fair catch. Back at the 26. The marker came from the Auburn end of the field, down toward the secondary. Wasden making the fair catch, and now the discussion goes on, and Florida State players jumping up and down. That penalty is going to bring a first down for the Seminoles, so the offensive team will be back on the field, and I think that right now, Pat Dye does not understand what that call was. From as upset as he is, obviously, it's got to be a first down call. And it was thrown really far back in the secondary also. Fifteen yards stepped off against Auburn, and here comes the call. Illegal participation, defense, 12 men on the field, first down. 12 men on the field. Oh, my goodness. When we were here for the Tennessee game, remember they had all those penalties early in the game, jumping off sides, men in motion. Those are the type of penalties, a, a, a substitution penalty that you just really is uncalled for because you're going to get the other penalties as the game goes on. Interception, and it would appear that Auburn will be called for the clip, but the Tigers will have the football. This ball was intended for Lawrence Dawsey. A little play action pass to hold the linebackers. There you see him. He comes up, he tries to find the hole in the zone, but Crawford reads the eyes and watch it back into it. That's a ball that Johnson never saw the linebacker. He looks, he looks, he makes a sure throw, he thinks, and all of a sudden there's a light. Oh, wrong color. Uh oh. Boy, you got to tiptoe to the defense, to the sideline and say, Coach, uh, I'm sorry I never saw that guy. He says, What do you mean he's got a blue shirt on? 
Six interceptions for the Auburn Tigers this year. That's the first for Darrell Crawford. Joseph puts the head down and takes it out to the 30-yard line. 55, you see Marvin Jones and also Leon Fowler, sophomore from Fort Myers, Florida, the free safety coming up to help out on the tackle. James Joseph is uh, healthy. He's had a bad knee. He's come back. They feel that he's uh, ready to run tonight. He's an emotional leader of this football team. And when he runs well, this Auburn football team is very, very tough to defense. That's five carries for Joseph now for 18 yards. War Eagle. Four front, eight man front. Loose, recovered, nope, they're gonna say incomplete pass. Whoa. Howard Dinkins is the man who started the collision. I don't know if Stan White and Shane Wadston was on the same page here. He called an audible event against the eight-man front, but he took a very deep drop, and Shane was running a five-yard out. Look at him, look. He only has two people going out for the pass, and Shane only went out about six yards on that play as if he thought it was a quick-out audible. A little bit of a mix-up on that play. Joseph at the third and four. Oh, what an open field hit, and that's Marvin Jones. Ooh. Folks, this kid is a freshman from Miami. 68 tackles, six tackles for losses, and here's a real good example why. Oh, what a play. Runs a 4-5-40, a true freshman. He just out of high school last year, and he met it head on. This is big-time football. He's a big-time player. Now with a second punt, his first is good for 36. And this one is end over end. Good return ball for Buckley. And he will be stopped at the 41, maybe the 42. Roy Hunter on the special teams. No score. 832 left first period. Well, take 31 yards. Only Sears Brand Central has all the name brand electronics you want. Like this LXI 2 Lux camcorder. Includes light attachment and telephoto lens. Only $799.95 at Sears Brand Central nationwide. It's feeding time for the beast in the basement again. And you know what that old furnace is going to do to your utility bills. <laughs> This the year you should find out about the savings Tempstar's high efficiency can bring. Replace that thing in the basement with a high efficiency Tempstar furnace. Start the savings, not the beast. Here's another demonstration of Chevy versus Ford. This one has socially redeeming value. We're loading up these full-size pickups with recyclables. The Chevy has a standard payload advantage of over 400 pounds. That's a pile of payload the Ford leaves behind. <laughs> no wonder so many truck owners recycle their trucks for Chevy. More people are winning with the heartbeat of America. Today's truck is Chevrolet. Only Sears Brand Central has all the name brand electronics you want. Like this LXI 2 Lux camcorder. Includes light attachment and telephoto lens. Only $799.95 at Sears Brand Central nationwide. ESPN's College Football Saturday, Florida State versus Auburn, is brought to you by Tempstar Furnaces. You can rely on the star. And by Chevy Trucks. More people are winning with the heartbeat of America. Ron Franklin along with Gary Danielson and Kevin Kiley, Auburn, Alabama. And you remember what we told you a couple of weeks ago in case you missed the telecast. That is for the people being held hostage in Iraq. And it will stay there until they have been released. Amp Lee tries to turn it outside. John Wilson, a senior from Haleyville, Alabama, comes up to make the stop defensively. And up for a three-yard gain to the 45. 
You know, one of the trademarks of an Auburn defense, Ron, is that they substitute early, and they already have. They've got John Wilson in, Richard Shea, number 93. The nose guard is rotated in, and number 51, James Willis, is rotated in. They attempt to keep their people fresh. They want to win this game. If they have to, be fresh in the fourth quarter. Good point, that it worked well against Tennessee. Sure did. Short drop this time, tipped, and Baker catches it, but he was out of bounds. Oh. That was close. Corey Barlow tipped the ball. Barlow made a nice break on this ball. It was just a quick out. He read the quarterback's drop, and had this ball been thrown very, very accurately, it was a little high, he might have had a play on it. Watch, he's backing, backing, backing. Whoa. That one's a little close either way. Watch, he almost got his hand on it, and a nice concentration. And he's even thinking about keeping his feet in. Well, he had his feet. It was his backside. His, they didn't his, come down his first. His backside did hit down first. That's right. He he was out of bounds. That's a good call. Lee of the quick screen pass, and he is not going to have it. They circled him out of the backfield. He'll be to the 49. Barlow and James Willis combining to the stop, and you can see just how far the Seminoles have to go. I think that was one of the situations where Bobby Bowden said, all right, we want to throw the ball, but we don't want to make a mistake here. Let's punt the ball. Our defense is playing good football. Scotty McLaren, sophomore from Griffin, Georgia. This punt's not going to turn over. In fact, a tough one to catch. And a free fair catch is made by Shane Wasden. No score. Just over seven minutes to play in this first quarter. Buster Douglas, Evander Holyfield, for the undisputed heavyweight championship of the world. Brought to you by the undisputed king of beers. Budweiser presents the moment of truth. October 25th at the Mirage, Las Vegas. Think about it. There are thousands of building products in there. So which do you ask for? Just ask for Georgia Pacific. Even if you forget that our southern gold plywood is double sanded for smoothness. Even if steam cured and solid lineal are Greek to you, just remember that every GP product has superior performance built in. So if ceramic coated granules or acroglass top coat seem impossible to remember, just ask for Georgia Pacific. That's all you need to know. HBO's Hit Football Series First and Ten presents It's Your Choice. In this episode, Jethro is up against former heavyweight champ Larry Holmes. Will Jethro A. renew his life insurance, B. tell Larry his shoes untied, or C. be knocked senseless? It's your choice. It's irreverent. It's irresponsible. Only HBO would dare run a series like this. If you said C, you made the right choice. First and Ten. Catch it only on HBO. Florida State and Auburn, no score, just over seven minutes to play in this opening quarter. Well, the Road Warriors, we talked about the record under Bobby Bowden, 5-1 and one at LSU, 4-2 and two at Nebraska, 2-0 and oh at Ohio State, 1-0 and oh at Notre Dame. And of course, when Bobby came to Tallahassee, it was a situation where he was trying to get a program going. He actually Look at did. this. More games he has played away than at home. 83% at home, 68% on the road. From where he came, he built the program by winning on the road. Richardson gets the handoff and immediately gets Marvin Jones. Guess who? Boy. This guy just has a taste for the football. He reads the triangle of the guards and the ball carry very quickly, and he just fills, and he fills with strength. He keeps his feet moving, and he just puts his hat right on there. I mean, this guy played high school ball last year, Ron. How would you like your son playing against this guy last year in high school? It was a picture-perfect tackle. His legs were coiled, and then he just sprung. <laughs> it for a short opening out over the 15-yard line. That was
was nice. He had nice patience with the hole that time. That's what Danley does. He's a senior. He's been in a lot of big football games. 1988 All-SEC. There you see him sixth all time. There's some, some big names in front of him in the one through five. He just very patient and hit the hole and had a nice positive play. It was to the safety. Florida State defensively. Before Miami, 117 yards a game versus Miami, 344 as far as the rush. Sips it over the middle, incomplete. Wanted Victor Hall. And Florida State stands to get really good field position out of this. Unless Richie Nell can boom one. Well, Stan White is just a beauty to watch throw the ball. He gets it out of his hand so quickly. When you say zip, I think that's perfectly how he throws it. That's a, that's just how it looks. It's, zip, it's gone. That time, though, he threw it so hard. The tight end was only about five or six yards away that there was no time to react to it. Well, you see the numbers on Buckley. You don't want to give him too much of a line drive kick, or he can do something with it in a hurry. That's a good coverage kick. Very high, wobbly spiral. And the ball is fumbled. Baxter recovers for Auburn at the 45. Make it Al Nash, number 58, rather than 85. talk to the Florida State coaches. They wanted to get out of this first quarter without a big turnover, and already it's happened. He just flat out dropped it. It was great. It was great coverage, but it was a high kick. Just very routine. Just went right through his hands. Baxter did get on it first, but it looks as though Nash has been given credit for the recovery. Stanley finds a crease and takes it down close to the 40-yard line. That's going to be a gain of five and a half, maybe six. Marvin Jones tripped him up. You can see it in his eyes. I mean, the intensity's there. There's no hype. There's no cheering. He expects to gain five or six yards. He's patient. He runs through it. He makes the play happen. He gets what he expects out of the play. Now, he's been injured during the early part of the season, finally, almost 100%. They use him again, and it's close to the Auburn first down at the Florida State 36. Marvin Jones is going for double figures in the first quarter, and we have a marker thrown down at the 25 in the secondary. Well, the play was between... Yes, the play was between Greg Taylor and Norma Corby. And Taylor came and threw on him, and there was a, a retaliation-type play. Let me make a point that we talked about in the opening of this telecast. Bobby Bowden was extremely upset, and you saw the video of him on the sideline in Miami, and he said they did not play with poise, and already. You're right. When he was yelling at his players, it wasn't extra. Here's the replay right here. Greg Taylor, if you play for Auburn, you've got to go down and block. And I'm sorry... That's the way it is, big-time football. Guys are going to throw at you. He didn't hurt you. He's got to step on him. That's silly. Very silly. Official, the linesman coming in from the far side. Players did not hear it, as it is terribly noisy in this stadium. So it is no play, and they will line up and do it again. But to complete my point, is Coach Bowden was not pleased with the lack of poise that Florida State played with against the Hurricanes. And so far tonight, they have opened it up with the fumbled punt, which was a tough one. Remember I said it was a wobbly spiral, but still, he just dropped it. And now a 15-yard meaningless penalty. And a you know what else hurts is that when you're making mistakes like this when you're a young team, some of your key players, Brad Johnson and, and some of the guys you're counting on making mistakes, even it magnifies the mistake. Up one tackle, fighting his way, still on his feet inside the 15. Boy, Danley takes this one in here. 
This is so emo such an emotional lift for your teammates. When you take it up inside, the line is just coming out. That's coming across. It's just a little trap block, and he just hits the hole. And he keeps those legs and feet moving, and he runs, and he pushes. And he doesn't wait for a whistle. He just keeps running. What effort. The whole bench just exploded on the play. That's four carries for him for 23. It is a second down as Joseph comes back in. Auburn needs four. Richardson. He pushes him out. Tony Richardson, the fullback, is another true freshman. He bounces this one outside. Keeps his hands up. Look at him shift the ball over so he can straight arm right there. That's a freshman doing that. That's a well-coached football player shifting it so he can take care of his hands. 62 Troy Sanders had not tripped him up. He would have turned the corner sooner. He might have gotten he to the end zone. Fools. He would have been full speed quicker. You're right, Ron. Richardson, he'll score. a freshman from Davieville, Alabama. It's his third touchdown. John Bonwell sends it right down Broadway and it's Auburn, seven to nothing. Pat Dye comes right back to the freshman back right here. Turn, spins, nothing fancy about this. Good block there by the tight end. Fred Baxter, they like that guy, only a sophomore, and he just walks into the end zone. So with 3.34 left in the opening period, the Tigers strike first. In Florida these days, huge holding companies have gobbled up banks at an alarming rate. Big banks with big buildings, with big offices in big cities. Not bad if you live in a big city, but in our part of Florida, there's a lot more to a bank than a big building, like convenience, with more banking locations than anyone, and people, people you can count on when you need them. Because it's not what's on the outside that makes you successful, it's what's on the inside that counts. The Capital City Bank Group. of the most sensibly designed, most dependable spa sold today lies a secret back rub that no other spa can deliver. That's why, until you feel a hot spring spa, you haven't seen what a spa can do. Come test a hot spring spa. A smart choice. See the hot spring portable spa at Pensacola Pools in Carriage Gate Center on Thomasville Road. One full day of NFL action in just 60 minutes. In-depth highlights of every game played on Sunday. It's football's fastest hour, NFL primetime. Sundays at 7 Eastern, only on ESPN. Two races remain. Ayrton Senna needs one victory to clinch the championship. Alain Prost must win both. The excitement continues at the Grand Prix of Japan. Sunday morning at 8.30 Eastern on ESPN. Auburn takes advantage of the turnover. They go on top, 7 to nothing. Gary? Ron, every time a ball is run near the goal line, someone comes up with a good block. This time it's the reserve tight end, Fred Baxter. He's going to seal it in here and allow Richardson to bounce it outside for the touchdown. That's what you got to get on the goal line. you got to get somebody. This time Richardson lines up in the backfield and makes the key block and walk into the end. Kickoff taken by Baker, and a flag comes down as he was hit very close to the sideline at the 27. one more time. Ba Baxter's on your left. He seals it down, and that makes it easy for Bra for Richardson just to bounce outside. Very, very nice. Good looking back, isn't he? <laughs> he really is, and considering the fact that 
And how about what Pat Dye liked about him? When he talked about it, he said, I love the way the kid blocks. <laughs> We've already highlighted. Good heavens. I hate the salt bill on that tomorrow. Uh, you know, the two freshmen tonight, we've talked so much about Marvin the youngster from, from Florida State, Marvin Jones, and we see Richardson here, also a freshman fresh out of high school. Get it. He won't get back to the line of scrimmage. Ricky Sutton was the first man to make penetration. Then Fernando Horn, submarine. Actually, Fernando Horn, you were right, got through there with some penetration and made him stop a little bit, and everybody cleaned up. The senior, Fernando Horn, playing because Lamar Rogers, a guy they love also, is out this game. Defensive right tackle. About to go under three minutes to play. Opening quarter, you just joined us. 7 0. Auburn Tigers. Buckley fumbled a punt. Auburn took advantage and scored immediately. Flags go down. Movement on the right side of the line. I think you could see, I believe, Reggie Dixon come out of a stance or Mancini just before the ball was you know, caught. Ron, Florida State practiced with sound. Let's listen up to the call here. But I don't think you can simulate noise like this anywhere. Dawsey's going to come in motion on this play, and I think there was a big mix-up in the play because he is right behind the center. Watch him come in motion right here, and now watch when this ball is stepped. That's just a crowd noise penalty right there. Give the credit to 85,000 people on that play. That's three penalties against the Seminoles for 34 yards as Dixon came out of the stance just a little early. Second down, and the Seminoles need the 25. Draw play. Amp Lee takes it out to the 15. And now it's going to be third down and 10 as Mike Campbell came up defensively. Stop by number 98, Mike Campbell. Number right now, they have to be careful. This is a tough situation. They do not want to make another mistake early in this football game. You know, something conservative here, maybe get six, seven, eight yards and punt the ball will be somewhat of a success. The reason for the reaction is the Seminoles have just started their war chant. <laughs> and the, Do they ever stop? The, the Auburn <laughs> crowd, every time it comes up, this has been going on since an hour and a half before the game, they boo. <laughs> Looks for Dawson. Has it complete, almost broke off the last tackle. He'll be stopped short by four yards. Barlow got it. Well, that was the strategy. Throw it short and hope he can run for the first down, but good tackling in that Auburn secondary. Dawsey can really run with that ball after he catches it, so the secondary for Auburn has to tackle well tonight. Booming kick from Wimbledon. This is Wisden. Straight up the middle, and Auburn will scrimmage in Florida State territory again. ESPN's regular season coverage of the National Football League kicks off on Sunday, November the 11th. That's when the four-time Super Bowl champion San Francisco 49ers take on the Dallas Cowboys. Mike Patrick and Joe Theismann. Be sure and join the guys for all the action at 8 o'clock Eastern Time. That's on November the 11th. 1-10 left of this opening quarter. Auburn with a touchdown following the Florida State mistake. And right now, with excellent field position. You know, the groan of the crowd told you what happened right there, a mistake. You know, we've had a lot of individual conversations in this ballgame. We're not through the first quarter yet. <laughs> yeah, I think that, uh, you know, some teams have, uh, you know, role players at cover, and some teams have... Uh, Illegal motion on the offense. Role receivers and role runners for uh, at Florida State you have role talkers you know there's a few guys where you, you just have to take over the mantle that Deion Sanders left right here and there's some talking going on here. I'm sure it's been mentioned that it's the last three games it's three and all seven. New line of scrimmage the Auburn 48 James Joseph the lone setback. White has it complete at the 45 to Greg Taylor. 
this was a throw that he was basically covered, and he just rips it out there again. The kid can just watch how smooth he is on his feet, how light, nice. He gathers himself, and he just rips it out. Puts a little touch on this one right over the underneath coverage and right underneath the back coverage. What a nice throw. He's got a little chemistry going now with that guy. Greg Taylor and Stan White. I mean, they feel each other. They know where each other's going with Stacy Danley in the ball game gets the carry. Great defense is Terrell Buckley, who got picked on just a moment ago, comes up big in this play. And it's going to be a third down situation for the Tigers, and they look toward the Florida State 37 if they want to keep the drive going. That short side corner gets in the backfield many times when you got split the other way, and Buckley's as good at it as anybody is. He's a real, real tough customer, and he likes doesn't mind sticking his nose in there. He's only a sophomore out of Pascagoula, Mississippi, down on the Gulf Coast. They don't have enough players out there. Yep, there's the timeout. And you know, first of all, it, it was Stacy Danley who was looking around and hollered at his quarterback to say, Stan, I only see 10. This ball club's <laughs> tough enough to play with 11. Yeah, that, that's what, you know, they had some problems against Tennessee the same way in substitution. When you run a sophisticated offense, they're using four wide outs, three wide outs, two tight ends. Substitution always is a, there you look at Pat Sullivan with Coach Dye. That's a tough job. Pat has to stand next to Pat Dye the whole game. Now, you know that he's going to get yelled at every time something goes wrong whether it's not Pat's fault or not. He's got to hear it. The closest guy to the coach is going to hear it all night. Well, James Joseph had this to say about playing the Seminoles from Florida State. Couldn't ask for a better situation. Uh, to come into this game in the national pitcher to win it, win it all, and knowing we got to go through Florida State, which is one of the best teams in the country. And, and the fact that we haven't beat them in a while, that also means that that's a sentimental value as far as the seniors are concerned. Because this is the last shot we get at them, and we got them at home, and we don't want to waste that opportunity. And that's the point. One of the things that Gary talked about in the opening of the telecast tonight, as well as Auburn has done against so many teams independently and also in a conference, this is a club that some seniors have not beaten. They don't want to leave school that way. White intercepted. McCorvey takes it back across the 45 and close to the 50-yard line as blocking continues downfield and the officials have to separate it. Sometimes when you have confidence in your arm, it can backfire. This time he tried the same pass he tried earlier. Little play action pass, and he was going to throw it between the two zones. It's not really a bad read. He's going to go to this guy. He's going to come out and back. But this corner right here drops back and gets the throw. It's one of those times when you're a quarterback, you, you start to believe you can do anything with the football. And he throws it. It just doesn't get it high enough. Casey Weldon in the ballgame at quarterback and movement along the Florida State line. And Reggie Johnson moved before the snap, couldn't get back. Now, he is a tight end and can reestablish, but what happened is Weldon continued to count, and the snap came at that time, so we didn't have the full count. He was in motion at the snap. That's, that's right. right. Casey Weldon is the junior. He was in a battle with Brad Johnson for the starting spot. We talked to Coach Bowden. He says one thing Casey does is look downfield a little bit more. Even though they're running this San Francisco offense, he would like to get the ball downfield a little bit more. Casey so far this year is 24 for 40, so he has gotten him some action. It's not like this is the first time he's played this year. Shannon Baker in a wide receiver. Comes wide to the right. to Dawson inside the 40 and down to the 37 yard line. Check it, it's Bennett, I beg your pardon, 22. What a great catch over the shoulder. That's good for 20 yards. Left tackle Reggie Dixon picked up a nice stun here to allow Casey Weldon the time to throw downfield. Watch him. He pops up, and then he takes the man as they turn, as they switch. And he keeps his feet moving. This is called screen blocking. Here's the nice throw. He had some people open short, but he waited on the play. Oh, what a nice play. Turns around and catches the ball going away from his body. Weldon has come back from 
under center because the clock has gone to triple zeros, and that is the end of the first quarter with our score, Auburn 7 and Florida State nothing. On a night like this, you'll be grateful for a safety feature found in almost every Chrysler car you rent from Thrifty. A safety feature Thrifty hopes you'll never see. It's an airbag. That's right, an airbag. In about half the time it takes to blink your eye, this airbag can inflate and save your life. At Thrifty, we take safety as seriously as savings. Thrifty. Thrifty, because it's your money. It's feeding time for the beast in the basement again, and you know what that old furnace is going to do to your utility bills, but you don't have to let that monster upset your budget. Send for Tempstar's Home Comfort Guide. It's free consumer information about the savings you can obtain with a high-efficiency furnace. The Comfort Guide informs you so that you can make the right choice when the time comes to replace old equipment. Before you start that beast in your basement, start something that could save you money every month. The information is free, and so is the call. This lady came in the other day. Some station downtown told her she needed new brakes and said it'd take four days. But you know, she only has the one car and she had to get to work. And missing one night of TV wasn't going to hurt me. So I told her, sure, I'd stay and get it done. Good service is why people choose a place like Harlan Motors and why places like Harlan Motors choose USF&G Insurance and their independent agents. USF&G is standing behind me. At Compaq, before we build our desktop personal computers, we look at you. We look at what you do and the power and performance you need to get it done. Since introducing the world's first high-performance 386 PC, Compaq has never stopped, giving you more power, more speed, and the best of the latest technology to do, well, that's up to you. Compaq, it simply works better. This year, Indy car racing was dominated by one man, Al Unser Jr., 1990 Indy car champion. If a driver ever told you, no, I don't get scared, I'm not scared, he's lying to you. The technology that goes into the Indy car is second to none. Over half the field at Indy is using babbling. If there was a motor oil out there that was better, it would be in my car. People who know, use Balvaline. Auburn, Alabama, 7 to nothing. We have had two great games earlier today. Iowa upsets Michigan, winning by one. And then in our second game of this triple header, as the clock ran out, Alabama winning over Tennessee to upset the number three ranked team of the nation. out of bounds at the 31 yard line. Casey Weldon, he's a junior from Tallahassee. And one of the things that Bobby Bowden told us on Thursday as we visited with him on Thursday morning is that Casey continues to push as far as pressure on that uh, on the starter, Brad Johnson. Well, it's a lovely situation for a coach. I don't know if it's such a great deal for Brad Johnson, but you can feel when a guy's pushing you. You see it in practice. You can see the coach's eyes. I mean, they like what he's doing. It's a very tough situation. You know, and Brad gets off to a tough start. He makes the change. it across the 25 and he's down to the 23 that's more than enough for the Seminole first down last year he rushed for over 100 against Auburn nice job here by Howard Haynes and Reggie Dixon and Bobby Blake the center left guard left tackle but watch Amp Lee how he runs low and his eyes are moving he says he's got great peripheral vision he sees the field keeps his knees moving nothing real flashy about Amp Lee just a lot of positive yards five carries for him for 27 yards as the boos go up because of the Seminole champ I'll tell you earlier today I know this is Auburn but when Alabama defeated Tennessee <laughs> knocking them into giving them a loss you should have heard the roar that went up here all of a sudden they were for the Crimson Tide well, it fires it long into the end zone, and it is incomplete. Almost intercepted by Ramsey, but he was out of the back of the end zone. 
This was very, very nice defense by Auburn. They patterned red. They were in a zone. They had somebody that right there where he wanted to throw it short. So now I'll tell you right now what Casey's going to tell the coach. Coach, I was throwing this out of bounds. No problem. I knew I had it just far enough to get it out of bounds where either my guy gets it or nobody gets it. Yeah. you got to have all those answers, Ron. As you go to the sideline, if you can stay in this league and play a long time, you got to have a lot of answers and excuses. You just can't be a good thrower. you got to have good answers. you got to give Baker credit. If he doesn't fight for the football, that would have been an interception <laughs> in right. Flags go down, and you can see the movement. Again, it's Reggie Dixon. As Reggie came out of his stance just a half count before the ball was snapped. Kev, I'll tell you something that happened on the play. <laughs> just <laughs> the Seminole War chant had just ended, and the Auburn band started to play. And quite frankly, Bobby might say something about that because the band's not supposed to be playing when they come to the line of scrimmage. See, if I was Bobby, I wouldn't complain about anybody's band. If my, if my band plays the whole game. <laughs> Throws it complete at the 20-yard line and still on his feet is Dossie all the way down to the 18-yard line. Walter Tate finally finishes it. Little sprint out action by Casey Weldon here. Comes out of the pocket and throws very nicely on the run. But it's Lawrence Dossie that makes the play. Watch him run down. He stretches, turns inside, but watch him come back and make the play right on the sideline. Beautiful throw. And now this is what Dossie can get you. Extra yards. He keeps running. He just doesn't go down like one of those little spindly wide receivers. He wants to make yards. The last of the Fab Four wide receivers. And he came 160 back. yards against Miami last week. Or two weeks ago. Breaks off a tackle, and he will have the first down at the 10-yard line. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Yep. Make a little fist action right there. I'm here. I'm ready to play. Now, what Casey Weldon also gives him, Ron, is he's 4'6", 40. Brad does not run like him. Little play action pass. Nobody's there. He knows he needs about six yards, and he takes it up. No time for sliding now. That's in the pros. He's got to turn and run. Stiff arm, climb, dive, get up, shake. Yeah. John Wiley, number nine, is the man who finished it. with Baker. Stretches it out. He's playing into Auburn's hands and still picks up four. <laughs> well, Shannon Baker, it looked like it was wide open for a second, but Corey Barlow, I tell you, he's a little embarrassed about the whole deal because he ran right back to him from behind here now. Nice little action. Good fake. The line sells it up front and here he comes. Look at all that green grass. Problem is, Here's Corey Barlow. Come on, Corey, turn him in. Uh-oh. Cunningham uh -oh. finished him off. A little bit of a stiff arm. He pushes him by with his hand. Whoa, that's embarrassing. Never like that. You're a DB. You're talking. You want to hit people. You don't want to fall down. And Florida State has called the timeout. Casey Weldon wants to go over and talk with Bobby Bowden on the far side. Let's go down to the sideline and hear from Kevin Kiley. Kev. All right, Ron, just in case you're wondering about the Florida State support in 85,000 seat stadium for Auburn here, his Mrs. is Ann Bowden, Bobby's wife. And how many family members did you bring to this game? Gee, listen, I don't know. They come out of the woodwork for these games. <laughs> I understand there's 75 members of Bobby Bowden's family in the stands. Bobby's from Mobile, Alabama, so he's right at home. Well, we're from Birmingham, actually, but I think we've got people here. We're not sure whether they are relatives or not. Kev. You know, Bobby told us on Thursday, he said, the, there are a lot of teams that the alumni want us to beat. 
One is Florida, the other is Miami. Not necessarily in that order because they want to win the state championship, but he said this one here is as big or bigger to me because I don't want to have to listen to my relatives the rest of the year. <laughs> Drive started back at the 42. They have consumed just over three minutes and covered 53 yards. Second and goal. Walden wants Bennett, finds nobody. Roberts is the intended receiver. He wanted Bennett in the corner of the end zone. Nice job by Casey again. Threw it out of there. Let's have a chance at least the third down play. A little bit of a mix-up on the pattern. Now, Roberts and Reggie Johnson, both tight ends, were in the same area. Had one of them cleared out a little bit, he might have had somebody to throw the ball to. So the situation, 7-0 ball game. As Casey Walden, 2 of 4, 29 yards. Auburn leads 7-0. And the Seminoles with the third and goal, five and a half yards away. It hit Dossie in the hands, and he got bumped, and he couldn't hold on. This is the same play, Ron, that they scored against Miami with. They're going to bring Dossie underneath it, a la Jerry Rice from the San Francisco 49ers, and I have to hit him here. But look at all the traffic on this throw. He hit him all right, but there was a lot of people there, very crowded. Richie Andrews, 6 of 7 in field goal attempts this year. 22 yards, he nails it. So Florida State on the scoreboard with 12.02 left until halftime. Sony unleashes V, a brilliant new videotape that draws more color and music out of everything it touches. New Sony V. Whether I'm racing 200 miles an hour, Driving 55. I don't accept compromises. You shouldn't either. Cars should be responsive, yet fuel efficient. Roomy, yet sleek. Not to mention affordable. Well, surprisingly, one car does all that and more. The new Cutlass Supreme. And in the coming months, we'll show you that when you take a look at any new Cutlass Supreme, you'll see. Here's one car that does it all and does it right. <laughs> Get your Air Jordan Flight Club calendar from Wheaties. On the box, Jocks. Just get Presents George Strait. ESPN's College Football Saturday, Florida State versus Auburn, is brought to you by Oldsmobile. Stop by your Oldsmobile dealer and see what's new from the new generation of Olds. And by Bud Light. Everything else is just a light. Ron Franklin, Gary Danielson, and Kevin Kiley. And it's wonderful to have you along on this Saturday night, the third Saturday in October. And as I mentioned, not only the two great games that we had earlier today, the upsets continued as Miami was bumped by Notre Dame today. Well, Miami now is, is going to drop out of the national picture and up steps Notre Dame again. You know, there's no doubt about that. Here they are. You think they're getting rid of them. They still have a tough schedule, but now they're at least they can control it themselves. Richie Andrews, the senior from Fort Lauderdale, kicks it away. Pedro Cherry collides with Casey. Cherry winds up with it. Breaks by one tackler, and he'll bring it out to the 23-yard line. Keith Jones defensively. So the storyline of this one so far is we have 11.55 remaining until intermission time. 
Turnovers, Florida State two and Auburn with one. Auburn with a 90-yard touchdown drive. Jones, six tackles, five of those solo. Penalty yards, it's been big against the Seminoles. 42 yards, and now Auburn with a total of 37. And the early going in the last three times they have played has been the demise of the Auburn Tigers. They've dug a big hole and couldn't climb back up. The last three losses, they turned the ball over in the first half. Pushing him back for no gain as the ball is loose. And you can see the official pointing to the turf, which means ball is dead here, but it's going to be a loss of one. Well, Ostazewski just laid one on him right there. The nose guard ran around and just put it on him. I think just as much a storyline, though, Ron, is that Florida State survived that early stage fight that they had against Miami. I got to believe Bobby Bowden is absolutely thrilled to be in this game. They're down 7 3, but he has to feel he's in the lead because he's in the game. That's a good point, and we had mentioned that they had lost a little poise early, fumbling the ball and then getting a needless personal foul call. Rolls the pocket, almost intercepted at the 38-yard line. John White almost came up with it, the senior from Thomasville, Georgia. There was the case again. Stan just believes in his arm. He throws the ball. He just thinks he can get the ball in those little spots. I like that, though, on a quarterback. I mean, you've got to live with a couple mistakes. Otherwise, this guy's not going to win it for you at the end of the game, and he did like did it against Tennessee. Leading the Southeastern Conference in total offense, 225 yards per game. And Gary, let me ask you a question. The underneath coverage is trying to play some tricks with him, aren't they? Well, I think that's the way you stop a good passer. Stan has to be a little more patient. Pressure right up the middle as they set screen. Joseph across the 26 to the 27, and it is not going to be nearly enough for the first down as Errol McCorby defensively makes the play for the Seminoles. Again, a situation where they weren't going to trust Stan with the ball. A little screen pass, the chance to pick it up 10, 12 yards on third and 12. You know the other team's playing zone is not very good. They just wanted to punt the ball. Fourth punt for Nell tonight. to the 33-34. Alex Thomas defensively on the special teams is there to make the stop. Mark, Mark Rick. Quarterback coach with Florida State. Back up to Jim Kelly at Miami back in the days. And uh, he's in charge of, uh, now it's Casey Weldon, but helping both of them over there. And uh, good place to coach quarterbacks because you get to throw the ball a lot. A lot of fun. I think he might even have got word there that he was on TV. Did you see him smile for us right there? Hey, you're on TV there. Smile a bit, Mark. Now let's talk about the sequence of what they talk about as far as the relays. Right. Bobby Bowden calls the plays, but he's hooked up to Mark Rick and Brad Scott, the offensive line coach, and they do it a little bit and help Bobby call it, keeping his prize of down and distance tendencies. Weldon with a handoff to Lee, finds a little seam to the left side, and Amp will take it up close to the 39-yard line. It's hard to, to knock Brad Johnson the season he's having. He's completing 67% of his passes, a respectable sell most seven and a half yards per attempt. But Casey Weldon is adding a little bit something to this offense with his ability to scramble and look downfield, and he spreads them out just a little bit. but gets by it, drills it, complete to Baker. Caught inside the 35-yard line. There is a flag back at the 38-yard line, and it's a 21-yard gain, and now Florida State players are jubilant on the field. Offside, defense, decline, first down. Hayward Haynes is matched up here against David Rocker, the All-American from Auburn. Watch him move his feet, keep his butt in, but watch Casey Weldon move up in the pocket. And he isn't just satisfied now with dumping it off to one of these guys. He fires it, rockets it downfield, and look at that throw right on the outside shoulder. Boy, that's nice. That's making something happen as a quarterback. You're real happy. You feel great now. 
three of six, 50 yards for Wellman. That was Eric Ramsey who gambled and went for the interception. Lee to the 24-yard line. Ramsey comes from that left cornerback spot to make the tackle, and all of a sudden, because of the mobility of Casey Walden and the passing game improving, the running game all of a sudden has come alive. One of the things Bobby Bowden was said he was going to keep an eye on is plays that went for more than four yards when he runs the ball. Look at this. Nine out of 11 running plays have gone for more than four yards. That's bad news for the Auburn defense. Short drop this time, Baker on the quick post, and he is inside the 15 to the 13. First down, Seminoles. A lot of the alumni for Florida State was kind of questioning Bobby Bowden, why are you playing the two quarterbacks in some of these early games? And he said he wanted to have both of them ready just for a game like this. And you could just see Casey Walden, he just feels it. The ball's coming out of his hand, he's not hesitating, he's going with his reads, and he's just delivering it. Actually looks like the Florida State offense from past years now, throwing the ball downfield instead of a short middle step. Seems like 11 in sync, you're right. Still looking. He's going to take it all the way to the corner, get what he can, and he's out of bounds at the 11. Cunningham was the closest man to it. Stopping the clock with 8.07 until halftime. 7-3 ball game. Auburn leading by four. Florida State threatening. Even though Casey Weldon made this look like a pass, this was run all the way. Look at the receivers. You can't catch the ball if you don't look back. There's Dossie downfield throwing some block. Dossie will hit you all night. A very aggressive player. It's a play in the playbook that they have for Casey Weldon. side against Florida State. It looked like Horn got back, but then Rocker moved to me on the other side. That's what Florida State is pointing, that it's going to be against Auburn. And that's the case. Horn jumps, Rocker sees it out of the side of his eye, and he moves also. Pat Dye, he's going to take, he's going to grab anybody he can right now. Coach, he's not happy with this. Watch, out of the side, out to the right side of your screen, somebody moves. Now watch Rocker, he's going to move. Uh oh, in the neutral zone. Penalty has moved it to the six-yard line. That's now four penalties against the Tigers for 42 yards. In the early going, it was Florida State that was playing with the problem. And now it's the Tigers. Second down. They need the three for the first. is down at the bottom of that stack someplace. There you look at it as a linebacker. This is the problem. Nice block by Bennett here. Fullback gets his hat on somebody and opens up the whole little isolation play. Florida State's run this. On this play, look at it, just, just short of the first down. Two Auburn players are going to hurt on this play. Dennis Wallace, number 30, is limping off. And there, there you see Dennis, and there's another player, Auburn player, down on the field. Did you call that one yet, Ron? Have we got an idea on that one? haven't gotten his number because the trainers were out so quickly. Yes. Yeah, Daryl Crawford is, uh, I think, who it is. And you know, just a moment ago, uh, Cunningham, Carrick and Cunningham, came limping off the field after he had uh, been in pursuit of Weldon and had chased him right. out. It looked as though his leg was hurt. So on two plays, or within three plays, Auburn with uh, some bruises on three defensive starters. Nice job by Edgar Bennett right there. I mean, when you stop Florida State, you have to stop their isolation, their sprint draw type play. And Bennett, I mean, this guy, check what he's doing. He's the second leading receiver on the team as a fullback. He blocks for those isolation plays, and he's averaging 6.3 yards a carry. I mean, that's good production out of your fullback. So let's go to Tim Brando and get another update on college football today. Timmy. 
This is an interesting game, fellas, largely because Mike Archer, if he's going to go 7-4, and four, has to figure he needs this game in order to hang on to his job. The game being played at Tiger Stadium, it is 10-10. Harvey Williams coming back from uh, really a disappointing start to the season with a 60-yard run. Al Baker, who seemingly has been at Kentucky for 10 years, he has a 30-yard touchdown run for the Wildcats. The score is now 10-10 with just 11 seconds left in the half. The game being played in Bayou Country. Let's get back out to Jordan-Hare Stadium now. Thanks, Timmy. You talk about uh, Mike Archer. Conversely, Bill Curry, I heard, made a statement about three weeks ago that he said that he is more impatient than his alumni. He wants to win now. Let's go down to Kevin Kiley on the sideline. All right, thank you, Ron. It was Darrell Crawford, number 56, a linebacker, took a blow to the head or the neck. He was a little groggy. I spoke to an official who was right on the scene, said he seems to be fine. He's coming around. Back up to you. Crawford, who had an interception back early on in the first quarter, receiving quite an ovation as the fans excited that he is okay enough to come out under his own power. Our situation, should you have just joined us, clock is just back whistled in, Auburn 7-3, to three, and the Seminoles with a first and goal a half yard away. Lee, touchdown Florida State. Bennett, I beg your pardon, 22 rather than 42, and Bennett puts the Seminoles on top. Bennett his fifth touchdown of the season his second rushing he has three receiving passes Richie Andrews knocks the extra point home and the Florida State Seminoles on top by three well Bennett gets the touchdown but credit the offensive line look at him get down Get down where the worms go and just keep the feet moving. If you can keep those feet moving through into the end zone, what you got to do as an offensive lineman is score yourself. Put your own stomach in the end zone, and you can get a touchdown. Buying a new car is a big step. With many car makers, the minute you drive it out the door, you may feel like you're on your own. But at Oldsmobile, you're covered by the Oldsmobile Edge, the most comprehensive owner satisfaction program in the industry, standard on every new Oldsmobile. We're with you every step of the way. to do in so little time. When it's time to finance or lease your new GM vehicle, let GMAC do it right in the dealership. GMAC. Nobody wants to put you and GM quality on the road faster. So you'll have time for more important things. A Ranger never takes the easy way out. You're reaching deep inside you for things you've never known. Go! That's why getting into the Rangers is tough and the training is tough. So it makes me feel like I'm part of something really special. Be all that you can be. And I'm not the only one. Edgar Bennett gets his fifth touchdown of the year, and it is 10 to 7 Florida State with just over seven minutes left to play until halftime. Richie Andrews prepares to kick it off. Number 20, Herbert Casey, sophomore from Foley, Alabama. He's the deep man for the Auburn Tigers. And right now, the momentum has shifted from what was a very strong momentum from Auburn early in the ballgame over to the visitors from Tallahassee. Casey from the 12. Great. Got a big opening. The kicker, Andrews, submarined and knocks him down shy of the 50. The kick 
was very high and short, and usually you don't get a great return on this. Look, he's going to catch this ball, what, about on the 13-yard line and real high. But look at that one. I could run through that one right there. And he kind of rushes it. He was a little patient right here. It looked like he almost gets too close to the block. He had an opportunity for another 8, 10 yards. 40 yards officially on the return, and Auburn comes right back with great field position. Joseph straight ahead, and he takes some people with it. As he goes inside the 45 to the 42. James the senior out of Phoenix City, not too far from here, 6'2", 225 pounds. If you just look right there at the Miami University game plan that they used against Florida State for all those yards. Split them wide, run to the weak side of the formation right at Kirk Brothers, and run hard. And just get that guard on him and just hit the, the hole full speed. Look at that, five yards. 7 and 9, 30 yards this quarter. This time, only about a yard in the play, and let's go back to Tim Brando. Arizona and USC. USC punter Ron Dale back punting from his own end zone. Watch Daryl Lewis. He will take off and go 43 yards. Finds a seam down the sideline. That would set up a Reggie McGill touchdown run. And Daryl Lewis has just picked off Todd Marinovich. So Arizona driving again, down by only three. Let's get back to Ron and Governor. 10 to 7. Florida State leads. Just over six to play till halftime. As Danley is coming to the ball game, gets the call, and he's going to be stopped short of the first down at the 40. As Curry and Freeman made the tackle. And instantly the special teams come on. And I don't mean the field goal unit because they're far out of range. And Richie Nell will have to punt it away. Very high kick. Buckley running toward it and makes the catch at the 21 yard line. Well, the student athlete of the game is brought to you by the U.S. Army. Learn how to get an edge on life. Be all you can be. Tonight's recipient is Florida State defensive back Keith Jones. Keith is a finance major with a 3.57 grade point average. Keith Jones. Our student athlete of the game, and congratulations to him. Well, Auburn, its offensive wheels have just fallen off, and this Florida State defense, you see number 45, Kirk Brothers, on the right side of the screen right there. And Stan White is only four for eight for one interception for 18 yards passing with five minutes left to go in the half. That is not the idea for a good game. Weldon has come in, he's four of seven, 62 yards. They give it to Bennett straight ahead. Daryl Crawford, who was injured a moment ago, back in the ball game, and he's there defensively for the Auburn Tigers. Now let's talk about what Auburn has to do here, because I mentioned the fact that momentum seems to have shifted toward Florida State at this juncture. Well, defensively, they have to find a way to corral Welburn now. He's given them a different look that they weren't ready for. Pat Dye has to get his guys tackling. They have to not let this guy get out of the pocket, because you can see what he's done. A couple big plays by getting out of the pocket and making something big downfield happen. Seven more. Wow, that was nice. Did he look, take a shot? Wayne Hall, the great defensive line coach for Auburn. It's turned out so many All-Americans right here at Auburn University. He's calling the shots. He has all the stats, all the tendencies, and he's trying to play with Bobby Bowden right now. What is he going to do? And it's hard to stay up with Bobby. I mean, he may call any. Total offense. His defensive uh, team is fifth nationally, number one in the Southeastern Conference, and it gets the rush. They are number two in the conference, allowing just under 100 yards a game. Weldon. And he will weave his way to around the 42 before Eric Ramsey puts a stopper on him. Casey, Casey Weldon is going to look for Lawrence Dossie downfield on a little curl route. There he is. He's not open. But watch what he does after this. Oh, he cleats one guy, and then he's not done yet. He goes for another guy. Running out a little farther. Guess, yep, he gets another one. That's how I come you can be. You can only be an All-American by doing that kind of stuff. Playing after somebody else gets the ball. That was impressive. Third catch for Bennett tonight for 25 yards. the right 
Forsythe cuts nicely off the block of Roberts, but he's going to be short of the first down by a couple as Ramsey finished him off with a nice job by Roberts, the tight end, blocking downfield. Right, I mean, they, I've, they've been keeping him off balance. I mean, this is a really, really nice offense there, Russ, and Runching right now. And he's been keeping off balance. I mean, we've talked to the coaches. They expected this Florida State team to throw. Look at this. First down, 10 rushes, four passes. That's because they've been successful with it. I mean, they've been running the ball and having success. They're going to stick to it. Crowd will let you know, third down, less than two. Tell by the silence of the Auburn backers right there in front of the student section. He got it plus about a half yard. David Rocker and Daryl Crawford combining to the stop. Let's see from the spot. Yep, that's going to be enough for the Seminole first down. One thing Brad Scott talked to us, the offensive line coach and offensive coordinator for Florida State, is that they were going to try to cut down the number of running plays they use. Use the ones that they were successful with and they could practice and coach. And they're just running their basic stuff right now. And that man in your picture there told us on Thursday, he said, heck, if I had my way, I'd put in five new plays a week. <laughs> well, somebody's got to hold on to him a little bit. He can remember him. I don't know about everybody else. the pressure takes it forward for two now three James Willis took his feet out from under him you know it's always nice you come in as a backup quarterback and if you don't make a couple of big mistakes early you feel so confident I mean, you got a lot of guys rooting for you you're doing well you say oh, I'm out here I get to play it's so much fun and he had some success early now and he's gonna be a first the rest of this game right then little play action pass had an opportunity to throw it, nobody open. He gets up and gets a little something positive out of play where he either just throw it away or maybe try to force it in. Harvard with a player shaken up down on the field. So with two minutes and 14 seconds until the halftime, we'll take a break. Be right back.私どもプロフェッショナルオートモーティブセンターではあなたの車がわかる言葉で話します。そうです。PSE the 1991 Old Cutlass Supreme is impressive. I know the facts, and I've been attracted to foreign cars in the past. But then I drove the 91 Cutlass Supreme for my new South Olds dealer. Let me tell you, I'll never look beyond the shores of Oldsmobile for quality again. Oldsmobile, I'm back. Mike Singletary hits hard, but not like the hard-hitting football news on ESPN's Emmy Award-winning NFL Game Day. The team of Berman, Axtown, Jackson, Edelstein, and Dyson hit the air each Sunday. Jerry Rice can cover the field, but not like the football coverage on ESPN's hour-long NFL Game Day. We'll take you all around the NFL and inside the numbers. NFL Game Day, Sundays at noon Eastern, only on ESPN. James Willis is a freshman from Huntsville, Alabama. He was the gentleman who was shaken up. They were going underneath his shoulder pad on the right shoulder as if he had gotten a stinger. Infamous stinger, right? Uh, that's the one no one has to explain what that feels like. Anthony Judge comes into the lineup, so it'll be Judge and Crawford, the two middle backers for the Auburn Tigers. Situation, clock is running. Two minutes left until halftime. Auburn trailing Florida State by three. middle screen and Lee needs one block and he's off to the races he's gonna score his 
sixth touchdown of the year, his first passing. The rest have come on the ground. What a nice job by Casey Weldon of waiting until the last possible moment to get that one off. Really nice job of faking the ball to Ampley and a lot of nice patience to wait for him to get open. You're exactly right. Nobody gave away the screen too early, and that's the key to running a good screen. This is a staple of their offense. They either hand the ball to the tailback, they fake the ball to the tailback and throw downfield, and now the other thing they do off of it from the other side of the field is they fake to the, look downfield now, take your time, and then float it in there for the screen pass. Oh man, that's so nice. Got two big guys out in front of you running, you just use your blockers and run an amp, showed me something there. I mean, they said he wasn't a sprinter, but he just ran away from some people there. I don't know if it's the way Florida State sets it up or if it is Amp Lee, but watch. You saw him catch the ball on the run. So many backs catch it dead still and then have to start. Perfect, perfect job of running the screen. If you catch it, stop. You have to regain momentum. Fire downfield. These guys work. Screen block. That's all you do. Stay in front of somebody. Then the runner can cut off of you. And, Ron, I mean, you're exactly right in what you say, and that, that's a perfect coaching point. So many screens, a guy catches it just standing there, and everybody else is moving. And, it's, you know, it's hard to start up. He was really under control, hit a little bit, and then got out in the play. 78 yards, seven plays, and that pass play, 48 yards. Three minutes, 46 seconds. That's... The length of time that it took. Now we have 140 left until halftime, and Auburn with a lot of time to work with, particularly with the passing offense that they have employed in throwing 38 passes a ball game. Well, are we going to see another barn burner like last time we were here when Stan White just goes to the no huddle and takes over, maybe? Herbert Casey. This time there is no avenues. He will not make the 20 yard line. Don't forget, coming up at a halftime, Tim Brando and Lee Corso will bring you up to date on this Saturday that has been another one of upsets. Highlights of that Miami Notre Dame game and a live interview with Jim Wacker of the TCU Horn Frogs. Unbelievable is what Jim says. And also an update on the World Series. Can Cincinnati wrap it up in four straight? Who would have thought that? Well, <laughs> not <laughs> Who would the have people in Oakland. <laughs> Tell you, not many people thought this would happen tonight. Florida State getting off like this in the first half. You can see the pulling guard, but a nice job to the outside by McIntosh. His king was in front of the play, but Joseph was knocked down quickly. And now the no huddle offense, Gary, just what you suggested. Well, he's good at it. He has a lot of great field presence, but they have to be more consistent with this team. And a little timeout by Florida State. Good call. Florida State did not want to get caught up in the rush. Okay, Harry, grab the button. I think we're out of here. Right. I want to drink your bud. Hi, I'm Harry. So am I. Well, there you are. You are not going to believe this. This Halloween, we're pretty sure Bud Supply. Pick up Budweiser, Bud Light, and Bud Dry. What's your Bud type? Dick, it's Charlie. We're in. That is, if Roman likes our work. He wants to see us at 6. Give me a call. Me again. We've really got to be together on this thing. Call me. I'm having an anxiety attack. Please call. Come on, Dick, buddy, pal, Dick. Answering machines have always done a great job of taking messages. Unfortunately, we've yet to find one capable of answering them. Panasonic cellular phones, because sometimes the best answering machine is a person. Dick, you're a real... If you want to see the movie Look Who's Talking, you can see it on both Showtime and HBO. But if you want to see Dead Poet Society, only Showtime has it. HBO doesn't. Showtime also has lockup. Sex Lies and Videotape. HBO doesn't. And only Showtime has Psycho 4 The Beginning, an original Showtime movie. Showtime exclusives. Here you see them, there you don't.
So the Auburn Tigers tallied first in this ball game, but since then, Florida State 17 unanswered. I think Auburn needs something to take into the locker room with them here. Well, this Auburn team has been inconsistent this year. They did not play a great half against Tennessee, a game they tied. And then against Louisiana Tech, they came back and had a chance to lose that game, but pulled it out. And tonight, they've started out a little inconsistently. So let's see if Stan White can rescue them with the two-minute offense that he did so well against Tennessee. comfort zone now. They have in a position where they can throw the ball. They're not backed up, so let's see the way they go with it now. Stands in charge. Ten carries for 43 yards for James Joseph. That's going to be a procedure call as the movement came just prior to the snap of Shane Wasden. He doesn't have to be told by the coaching staff. He is plenty disgusted with himself. You can believe that. Well, coaches always say there's no excuse for a wide receiver to be offsides because he can't hear the snap count anyway. He just has to look in and watch the ball. Shane's looking in there. He's got his eyes on the ball, but oh, man. Nice little move, but uh, a couple counts early. Trying to get that, that quick jump on Buckley. <laughs> that guy's got the tie undone. He's going to have to give one of those halftime talks again this week and get him fired up for the second half. Three minutes, 39 seconds, ball controlled this quarter, which is not much. Joseph on the draw play. Some of the crowd not totally understanding of that call. Carruthers is there along with McIntosh to make the play defensively, and now Auburn, after the running play, goes with no huddle again. Florida State playing very deep. Let's be careful, Stan. You don't need a turnover now. Over the middle of Joseph. That's Carruthers who was riding him down, and he'll be short of the first down. Also, Marvin Jones helped out on the stop. No first down, so the clock continues to move. Whoa, it's fourth down. Fourth down, just over a yard to go. I don't know why they want to call timeout and punt. There's, there you go. Pat doesn't want to call timeout either. If we could get a... Some well, of the times what's happened in that situation, Ron, is one of the right receivers called timeout. It's not even the quarterback. Everybody thinks there's an expert out there, and now they're going to be forced to punt the ball. That's a very disturbing situation. You know, your quarterback's looking at the coach. The coach is giving you some kind of hieroglyphic signals of what to do, and you have no idea what he means out there when you're standing out there. And all of a sudden, now they got to call timeout and punt the ball. Obviously, that's not what the coach wanted. Florida State, though, is going to lead the defensive unit on the field rather than special teams. They're going to let them punt it away. They don't want to take a chance on a fake. Well, with a 10-point lead, I don't blame him. I know Pat Dye feels good about that. I would like to see him come with a block here. Richie Nell with the punt, and this one going to be like your best nine iron. Will it stop in time? Inside the five, and Baxter will go inside the one-yard line. <laughs> Unfortunately, they're not going to get a chance to use the field position. So Tim Brando will be coming up at a halftime to bring us up to date on what has happened in college football today. But right now, let's take a break. Florida State leads by 10. This is how the roomy new Cutlass Supreme SL looks after traveling 300 highway miles on just 10 gallons of gas. And this is how Honda Accord looks after the same challenge. Well, if it hadn't run out of gas 20 miles back, you'd see that it's smaller and it's blue. Next trip, Dad, it's yours. Who says you can't get great gas mileage in a roomy, comfortable car? Cutlass Supreme is one car that does it all and does it right. This is the new generation of old. ESPN's coverage of college football continues. Now with all the scores and highlights, Tim Brando and Lee Corso. 
Oh, you could call it Elimination Saturday. Welcome to the USF and G Halftime Report. I am Tim Brando. We'll hear from the coach in a few moments, and we'll also hear from Jim Wacker, the head football coach of TCU. Elimination Saturday because four top teams that traditionally are in the race for the national championship were meeting in two big games today. One team had to be eliminated in the Miami-Notre Dame game. Let's show you what happened there. In the fourth quarter, a play installed today, this morning, by Lou Holtz. He had recognized, along with his defensive staff and offensive staff, that Miami would blitz a lot. Look at that block by Tony Brooks at the eight-yard line. That's a touchdown to Rodney Culver. After the blitzing linebackers came through, that was the game that iced it away. 29-20, to Notre Dame gets the victory. Now the upsets on this elimination Saturday. Tennessee, a team that was certainly in the championship hunt, loses to Alabama 9-6. to Doyle with a now fifth on the SEC all-time scoring list. He gets the victory on ESPN earlier today. Iowa and Michigan, 24-23, also on ESPN today. Down to the wire, John Vaughn held to just 86 yards. Michigan's first consecutive loss situation at home since 1967. Georgia Tech and North Carolina. Can you believe this? The Tar Heels tie Georgia Tech. But remember this, the Ramblin' Wreck had not beaten North Carolina since 1945 in Chapel Hill. Iowa State and Oklahoma, 33-31. to The Cyclones win. Chris Peterson gets in. Oklahoma fans may think he didn't, but again, no appreciable way of finding out the game was not televised. No closer angle of it. They'd get the victory by two. Minnesota and Indiana, how about this? John Gutekunst is sitting 3-0 and and has a shot at a Rose Bowl, and his job was supposed to be on the line at the beginning of the year. They beat Bill Mallory's Hoosiers, who were fresh off a tie against Ohio State last week. World Series update on the way. As we mentioned, Jim Wacker will be heard from the fine coach of the Horned Frogs of TCU. We'll talk about the muddled situation in the Southwest Conference. As we take you to break, Joe Krivak's club edges Duke today. Here are some other scores on an autumn college football Saturday. Jerry comes in every Saturday. Last week he wants copper pipe and solder. Now I know Jerry, so I say don't forget to shine the joints before you flux. And he says flux, so I told him to call me if he hit a snag. I think he called 11 times. Good service is why people choose a place like Ebers Hardware Store, and why places like Ebers Hardware choose USF&G Insurance and their independent agents. USF&G is standing behind me. Along the edge of San Francisco Bay, just off the Embarcadero, you'll discover the Fog City Diner. Elegant as a formal dining car, yet friendly as a Main Street cafe, where people reserve weeks in advance to taste the red curry mussel stew or the grilled chicken with roasted peppers. So leave your troubles behind, but bring your Visa card, because at Fog City, they take things easy, but they don't take American Express. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. My son, Jeff, one busy guy, but he will drop everything for Campbell's Chunky Soup. With delicious chunks of vegetables and meat, Chunky's quick to satisfy. So Jeff can pick up right where he left off. Campbell's Chunky Soup, the satisfying stop that keeps you going. Because there are races that last 24 hours, because there are rallies that last four days, there are high-performance tires, cold missions. The USF&G Insurance Halftime Report is brought to you by USF&G Insurance. Protecting your business, home, auto, and life. USF&G, standing behind the USA. Welcome back to our Evelyn Woods scoreboard, and we're going to run through baseball very quickly for you. Oakland one to nothing in the second. The interesting story here, Eric Davis left the game with a rib injury while trying to make a catch. Willie McGee hit the line drive. By the way, McGee has already saved the day in right field. Jose Canseco has been benched by Tony La Russa. Billy Hatcher left the game. He was hit by a pitch on the hand by Dave Stewart. Riho and Stewart still out there. Now, Wake Forest and Virginia, 49-14. to 14. The Wahoos get the win. Sean Moore, 258 yards on the day in the air. 
Oklahoma State, Nebraska, Huskers roll 31-3 after leading by only seven at the half. Michigan State and Illinois, the flying Illini rolling, by the way, their basketball program, no major sanctions, not the death penalty. More on that coming up on SportsCenter later tonight. Houston and SMU, 44-17. Klingler's number is unbelievable, 48 of 76, 461 yards, five touchdowns. Washington and Stanford, Cardinal blown out. 52 to 16 in the game. Brunel, a big day. Greg Lewis, 108 yards on the ground. USC and Arizona, that game now in the fourth quarter. Wildcats by 421-17. Colorado, that roller coaster ride, now beginning to even out a bit for them as they blow out the Jayhawks. 41-10, the enemy breaking records for the Buffaloes. Florida and Akron, now to Florida's credit, they will put Miami back on the schedule. Spurrier wants to, but this was like Montana State last year. It was very ugly. Now, Arkansas State and Mississippi, 42 to 13. The Rebels get the victory 495 yards total yards on the ground for that ball club today billy brewers club just keeps on keeping on jim wacker is on the way next from his living room outside fort worth stay with us demanding. I just have an expectation of excellence. I want the best quality and commitment. And for my car, I want super lube and tins oil. In 10 minutes, I get an oil and a filter change, chassis lube, and 10-point maintenance check. No surprises, just quick, easy car care at a fair price. I'm not hard to please. Just give me your best shot and show me your care. I'll say it, coach. Super lube gets the job done. You get world-class protection with super lube and quality pens oil. Tired of waiting in long checkout lines when you have just a few items and you're in a rush? Come to Swanee Swifty instead. It's fast, easy, and there's one just around the corner. Plus, you'll find practically everything under the sun. Stop at and gas up or pick up groceries or a snack to go. The Swanee Swifty store, they're on your way, so you can be on your way. Stop by today and save. At Swanee Swifty young minds need the proper positive influence a steady hand to mold them to a responsible active member of society the 10 institutions of the southeastern conference are dedicated to providing the needed guidance and direction today's youth are tomorrow's leaders so the final product is one that must endure a lifetime the southeastern conference the standard for excellence the value of teamwork, of, of depending on some other people to uh, do their share of, uh, of the work, and you can't win without uh, those 11 guys doing everything they're supposed to do. Also, I think the, the, the feeling of, uh, of when you do lose, that uh, life isn't over, that the, the sun will come up tomorrow, and uh, you get a bad review, you go on. College football prepares you for the game of life. A team that has traditionally given Auburn fits. They last lost at home to Jordan Hare at with Florida State. It could be happening again. Tim Brando back at our college football studios. Texas beating up on Arkansas today, 49 to 17. Most points against Arkansas since 1916. That's for Texas. The records keep falling for Ar Arkansas's defense. Now, Texas A&M and Baylor. This is a 2020 tie. Certainly helps muddy the situation in the Southwest Conference. We'll get into that a bit later. Texas Tech and Rice. Fred Goldsmith, what a tremendous job he has done. Balance of power really shifting to the have-nots in the Southwest Conference, 42-21. Look at the standings in this league. Houston is 5-0, but remember, they're ineligible. They can't go to the bowl game. TCU sits in the catbird seat. They've got Texas coming up November the 17th. Baylor and Texas A&M, you can't say that they're out of it, but they're certainly in a little bit of trouble. 
And last week, you may recall, I made the statement here that it would be difficult for the Cotton Bowl to have a TCU, certainly a team that does not have a great deal of marquee value, only draws about 30,000 folks for most of their games. And the Cotton Bowl, quite frankly, has lost some credibility in past years because teams that have lost in the SEC, finished second or third in, in past years, have been the opponents for the Southwest Conference champion. Well, obviously, Jim Wacker was a little bit upset at that statement. I certainly understood why. And first of all, Coach, I'd like to have your response to the statements by me and others in the media that have been critical of the, the Cotton Bowl situation. Uh, Tim, first, I think, uh, you know, obviously, when you were a young boy, you had to root for Goliath and against David. There's no other way to look at it. Uh, you know, uh, hey, it's good sometimes when the schools with, you know, not the large student base or the large alumni population or the big stadium or the big budgets and so on, when they go out in the field and they compete and they play and they win. And when that happens, and when a team like a TCU or a Rice can come up and knock off the big dogs and go to something like the Cotton Bowl and win the Southwest Conference, that's great for college football. And I promise you, that'll be the best story in 1990, uh, if that right. can happen. And that's what we're hoping. All right. Now, you lost Tony Darther, and that was difficult for you. He didn't play much of last year. And really, Leon Clay has stepped up his play, it seems, with the loss of Darther this year. He's really become a fine quarterback for you. No, Leon's done a great job for us. Of course, Curtis Motkins, a young sophomore running back, came in, and he's also done really well uh, and, uh, you know, is one of the leaders in the conference in rushing each game. But Leon Clay, uh, geez, fifth in the uh, nation right now in total offense. Uh, he is doing a great job running the ball as well as throwing the ball, and he has been a big difference maker. Only a sophomore, that's the best news, too. Uh, I know you've got some difficult games on the road. You have to play Houston on the road. You have to play Texas A&M on the road, but you get Texas at home on November the 17th. I want to jumpstart you a little bit and talk about them today because they really rolled over Arkansas, had not had a tremendous day. The freshman, the highly heralded freshman. Tell me about the Longhorns and how impressive they are for David McWilliams. Well, I'm really happy for David McWilliams, first of all. Uh, boy, it's fun to see him finally, you know, getting it all together there for the Horns. Uh, they were really impressive. I got to watch that game as well, and uh, uh, they really rolled today. But by the same token, uh, hey, there are a number of teams playing well in the Southwest Conference right now. Of course, Houston's playing very well, and the Horned Frogs are playing pretty good. And what about those Baylor Bears going out there and tying the Aggies in College Station? So it is muddled right now. It's one of those things that anything can happen. The only game I'm worried about right now, Tim, is those Baylor Bears. That comes up first this coming Saturday. I got you, and their defense is tough. Jim, thank you so much for taking time out to join us. Hey, thank you, Tim. Enjoyed it. We love to have point-counterpoint from time to time, and who better than Jim Wacker, right? I want to talk with Lee Corso now. You know, Lee, you certainly can understand the position that Wacker took after I made this statement last week, which I believe was a true statement. Well, it's sure, because I was always behind Ohio State and Michigan when <laughs> Indiana in 79 won. Looked like we were going to Rose Bowl. Everybody was... But you know what happened? We didn't go. We went to the Holiday Bowl and beat BYU, the ninth-ranked team in the Holiday Bowl. So I'm all for Wacker. I hope he goes somewhere and beats somebody good. All right. Stay with us. We've got a lot more scores on the way as the USF&G Halftime Report continues. At the half, Florida State has the lead at Auburn. Only Sears Brand Central has all the name brand electronics you want. Like this LXI 2 Lux camcorder. Includes light attachment and telephoto lens. Only $799.95 at Sears Brand Central Nationwide. When the party of the first part achieves control of 51... ...nation caused productivity to rise an estimated 50... The manufacturing division is currently operating at full... A successful reallocation of resources is had a desire... Occasionally, mergers produce results that individuals would find impossible to produce on their own. State-of-the-art software and service worthy of it. You can spot someone who saved money with a second-rate antifreeze a mile away. Not all antifreeze is the same. Nothing beats Presto. And that's something you might appreciate down the road. The towers of the Westcott Administration Building. Symbols of the spirit of Florida State University. A spirit of exploration. Of discovery. Of innovation. Of distinction. Of achievement. The spirit behind the spear. Educational excellence at Florida State University. Ron 
Donald Veal has just scored for Arizona. They now have a 28-17 lead over Southern California in the third quarter. Weber State and Wyoming, the lonesome boys from Laramie keep doing it. Dwight Driver, a six-yard TD run, 105 yards rushing in the game. Clemson and North Carolina State, a late turnover, the key in the game. Tigers rebound. They're now 6-2 and two overall. LSU and Kentucky have now moved to halftime, 24-13. Harvey Williams now beginning to talk. Uh, and play at the same time. That's good for Harv. Now, Mississippi State and Tulane, it is 17 to 14 at the half. The Green Wave looking for a win for Greg Davis, who has become a bit beleaguered as of late. Stay with us. We're going to take you to break by showing you a few more scores. BMI, a winner today over Western Virginia Tech. We'll be back. into one of six convenient Big Ten tire locations today and get Safari tires for an incredibly low $69.88. How do you do that? Well, it's easy when you get a good deal <laughs> on a great tire. Florida State University Homecoming Pow Wow 1990 featuring Bruce Hornsby and the Range with special guest comedian Richard Jenny. I was ready to meet some women, you know what I mean? I mean, I'm going, okay, I'm ready, bring on the sweaty chicks. Friday, November 9th, 8 p.m. at Dope Campbell Stadium, including the crowning of the Homecoming Chief and Princess, Bobby Bowden, the senior football players, and a special fireworks display. Tickets are on sale now at all Ticketmaster locations. Charge your tickets by phone at 407-839-3900. The spirit of Auburn lives on as one of its famous sons returns to campus. Bo Jackson spends valuable time in the classroom working toward a degree in family and child development to achieve his lifetime goal. The value of a college education to me is something that I'll always have. I'll have for the rest of my life and after I'm finished with the sports world, it, it's something that I can fall back on. The World Series moving into inning number three now. Oakland still with the one to nothing lead. As we mentioned, Lansford with the RBI single driving in Harold Baines in the game. And remember, Baines is the DH, not Canseco, and he has been benched in this ballgame by Tony La Russa. Now another a football game to update you on. The Mean Green of North Texas now trailing McNeese State. The Cowboys just kicking a field goal in the fourth quarter. It is 16 to 14. Well, Lee, you remember a couple of weeks ago out at uh, Auburn, we were talking about that halftime menu. I bet Ron and Gary loaded up on it. What do you think? I bet you they did. You know, we have here, they eat all that roast beef and everything. We had cold pizza. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Well, that's the difference sometimes, our commissary versus theirs. Let's show you what the menu is at Jared and Hare today. Oh, marinated chicken breasts, wild rice, seasoned California medley, a little, a few rolls, some tea, a little chocolate cake. And then, of course, if you're Franklin and you don't like that, it's Bon Appetit with hot dogs, cookies, and, of course, you get the, uh, you get the quick kick Gatorade as well. All of that from David Housel tonight. Makes a big difference. Bon Appetit in the second half, gentlemen. Tim, thanks so much. 17 to 7, our score here at halftime. And one thing that uh, David Housel or Pat and I neither wants to see, and that is Tiger on the menu. So far, that has been it in the first 30 minutes. Just a moment ago, Kevin Kiley had a chance to talk with head coach Pat Dye. Thank you very much, Ron. I'm down here on the sideline with Coach Pat Dye. Uh, Coach, the Tennessee game at halftime you trailed. You said you had to pull the guys out of the dumps. What'd you tell them now? Uh, the Tennessee game was a lot different than tonight. I thought in the Tennessee game, you know, we we controlled the ball 20 minutes in the first half. Florida State dominated the second quarter of the ball game, and uh, I mean, on both sides of the football, they kept the ball away from us on offense. We didn't ever stop them, and. Uh, 
that defense, you know, I don't know that we made a first down until right before the half, maybe. What'd you, well, tell, the, What'd you tell the kids? It's not a lot. We can't, you know, you can't change your game plan. I mean, it's obvious that we got to play harder and play better. Uh, to me, the big difference in Florida State's uh, first half is when they put Weldon in that quarterback and he made some nice plays for me, scrambled a couple of times and, and kept them alive. But uh, we didn't play very well defensively right, in the first sir. half offensively either. All right, have Thank a good you. second half, Coach. All right, Ron, back to you. Thanks, Kevin. The difference has been Casey Weldon, 70% passing in the first half. Seven for 10, but it's the other things he did. It was his ability to get out of the pocket and create some big plays that Brad Johnson can't do yet. I mean, look at little play action. That's the staple. Everything starts off of that. And then he avoids the rush, and he looks downfield, and that's what he does so well. Look at that nice throw right on the shoulder, and there it is, a big play. And that opened up the running game and everything else, uh, able to throw the screen and really got the offense going. The other thing that impressed me, Florida State, I think, has surprised Auburn tonight with their ability defensively, particularly against the run. Well, their inability, Auburn's inability to run, to throw the ball effectively, Stan White at halftime was only five to nine, meant that Florida State could load up on the defense, and their front three was able to stop that running game and, and made it look stats like this at halftime. 17-7 the score. Look at that. Four first downs, and as Pat Dye said, one of them was right at the end of the half when they were going two minute, and Florida State was back. Passing yards for our Auburn, 24 yards. And total yards for the half, 226 yards for Florida State. That's just too much. Ron? Thanks so much. And, of course, that figure in the passing, the fact that Auburn has been averaging 289 yards of ballgame throwing. But you all know what happened two weeks ago here against Tennessee as far as a second-half comeback. We'll see if it's in the cards tonight. Florida State holding to the momentum right now, but they'll get the football. Shannon Baker can't feel that one, so Florida State will go from their 20-yard line, and now a flag has been thrown back downfield as several of the players continue to push and shove after the ball went into the end zone. Penalties in the first half. Personal foul, Personal foul against Florida State, so the Seminoles are going to start at the 10-yard line rather than the 20. That's six fouls against Florida State for a total of 52 yards in the ballgame. Auburn was penalized four times for 42 in the first half. Now, the thing that Weldon is going to have to deal with is right there, Gary. He is right has behind him the student section and to his right, very close to it. Field position always plays a big part, but when you're backed up next to the other team's crowd, I mean, there's no doubt that this is going to be a very important series. Ten-point lead for the Seminoles, and the crowd trying to help out. Weldon has it complete just shy of the 30-yard line. Dawson. Well, how do you handle first and 25? Just rip it out of your own end zone with a little play action fake and go one-on-one -on -one and just uh, have a lot of confidence in a kid that you believe in, even though he's a backup. Nice fake. Takes his time, and then he comes out. Almost touches the goal line. Now watch him rip this throw in here. And Dawsey just plucks it out with two hands. Very, very good execution there. For the Florida State fans wondering why that was not a first down. It was a post-play foul after it had gone into the end zone. So they had first and 20. And Lee hurdles a man at the line of scrimmage, tries to negotiate the corner, and Corey Barlow is holding on. Very, very disappointing two plays right here for the Auburn defense. You know they wanted to come out at halftime. Here's Weldon again. Makes the deep handoff to Ampley. A little jump, a little hurdle, and he keeps those knees going, those arms going, and keeps looking for the outside and pick up the first down. Ampley is nice, nice looking football player. Leading rusher for Florida State. 335 yards and 70 carries coming into this one.
Walden high over the middle, overthrown as Dave Roberts was being converged on from three different directions. Well, you can tell Bobby's got a lot of confidence in this kid now. First down again, they come out with the play action. A little deep double zone. He went to the tight end down the middle. He made the proper read and just threw it a little too far. We saw that stat back in the first half of how much Florida State had been throwing on first down. And here he comes out in the second half and does it on both first down situations. Well, they had a lot of success running the ball in the first down, too. Florida State just feels that they can dial anything right now, and they feel confident in it. as a flag is down, is it my imagination or did the, the blockers, who went the wrong direction? <laughs> well, you got to say the guy, let's catch out the penalty right here from the referee, but you got to say the guy who has the ball went the right way, but I think the screen guys went the wrong way. I call the screen and all of a sudden I don't see any screen flags. Well, I've heard there. of naked boots, but naked screens don't usually work <laughs> very, very well in any league. Well, I'll tell you, there's some talking going on in the huddle. And Amp Lee's going, men, men, right is to your right, left is put some tape on your shoe or something, guys. Holding, offense, 10 yards, repeat second down. Well, they did two things. They held and they went the wrong way. Bad time right here. These guys right up here, they're going to come out here and look for the screen blocking. But the tailback is going to take the fake and go out this way for the, for the pass. It doesn't work very good when the blocking goes one way and the screen guy goes the other. What? <laughs> yeah, pretty good looking play if he'd have gone to the, to the other side of it. I'm not saying he was wrong. I don't know. Fake to reverse, and Lee breaks the first tackle, but will not get by James Willis. That's a loss of five more by Florida State. And it's going to be a third down, and they will need the 44. Number 92, Sutton, is going to string out the play from the other side of the field. He does it. He stays, plays off his blocker and throws him up. He's got two jobs right there, Rob. Turn the man inside and get rid of your blocker. He did both. Excellent. Wait for the pursuit. Big third down for Florida State. They're going to go out close to the 45-yard line. Looking for Roberts, incomplete. to punt and Auburn has the coverage on and this is a beauty. Wasden from the 32. Great coverage by Florida State. That's LeVon Brown who was downfield on the special teams to catch him from behind. 45 yards in the punt and seven yards on the return. Auburn possessions. Well, there's a lot there, but the important thing is the results. And out of that, they've only gotten one touch on that great 90-yard drive that they did in nine plays. But it has been punt, punt, punt all night, and that is not good news. The biggest job by Florida State was when Auburn had it at the 48 and still wound up punting the football. No points. That's complete to Victor Hall. Being pushed back, maybe a gain of about four. And guess who pushed him back? And you can always tell when Marvin Jones hits a guy, they fall backwards. I mean, this guy just explodes through his tackles, number 55. And I'll tell you what, they've got a youngster behind him who's a true freshman out of Austin, Texas, Ken Alexander, 6'3", 240, and they're looking for him and to they, be a great one. And they like him, number 36, and they say he's starting to push All-American Kirk Carruthers. I mean, it, this is a competitive football team. They bring in good players every year. White, dialing up, and he can't get it. Greg Taylor was open and had beaten his man by about four yards. Well, it doesn't get any better than that for a quarterback. 
The free safety bit on the crossing route. Stan even has to chuckle about it. You can't have it any nicer than that. Free safety bites, and Taylor just comes down and beats his man easy. Now the corner, it's not entirely his fault. He thinks he has a free safety in the middle of the field. Two things wrong here. Threw it too far, and he threw it too far to the outside. Stan, I mean, you just, just love to have those back. I mean, you look at the bench, you go, Pat Sullivan, my coach, I didn't mean to do it. Blitz is coming up the middle. White's delivery incomplete at the 45. Cherry would parallel to the ground to try to bring it in. So Auburn got what they wanted just a moment ago. Good field position. And now unable to move it. And able to have to kick it back to Florida State. Richie Nell. Did you see that right there? Pat Dye did something really good. He patted Stan on the white. So that's a Stan White on the butt. And said, that's all right. We got a lot of time left. We're going to have plenty more opportunity. Good job by Pat Dye. Two covers putting on quite a show right now. Buckley from the 10. That's a flag. And he'll be tackled at the 17. Dennis Wright was down on the special teams, and another flag has come in. That's 46 yards and eight on the return. And I should mention, both of these coaches have been a little perplexed about their punting. Right. Uh, they, right now, they're really thunderfooting. And, and for Auburn, he's having the best game anybody on the field so far for him. I mean, he's just putting the ball very, very well. left in the third Florida State by 10. Some may go less. Some may go more. If you're interested in a longer life, drive a Volvo. So your little brother's joining us, huh? He's not so little anymore. All right, now let's move it! He's what, 19? White setting, 540, F14. Jeff's landing planes? Four gear lens set? No. $40 million jets. Today's Navy. High tech training that takes you only one way. Full speed ahead. Primary's off. Good job, guys. You and the Navy. Jeff? See? Yeah, he's not so little anymore. Full speed ahead. ESPN's College Football Saturday, Florida State versus Auburn, is brought to you by Volvo, the car that's famous for its safety, durability, and longevity. And by the U.S. Navy, you and the Navy, full speed ahead. Just a part of the 85,214 on hand tonight to see this matchup, the second year of a 10-year contract between Florida State and Auburn University. Jordan Hare Stadium has lost only eight times. And if you remember what we said back in the opening, though, the last time that he lost the game here was against this same team from Tallahassee, Florida. It's those little mistakes that are really costing them in this football game again. They, they have a great situation. Florida State has their worst field position of the game to start a drive, and then they jump off sides. is having to deal with the student sections which actually cuff in that corner to his right and also behind him. I'm sure that he doesn't want to have to call an audible if he can keep from it. Amply great change.
change of direction. Boy, he gets tagged by Eric Ramsey. But I believe he's going to have the first down. Yes, he is, out at the 18-yard line. And here come the big boys in. Get a first down. They're going to put the number one unit in. I mean, they keep everybody fresh, but you still like to have those starters in. Looking at Frank Stankunis right there, who's in for Dennis Wallace, who limped off early in the game. Now, this is not really too bad for Auburn. I mean, he started 11 games last year at safety, and Wallace beat him out this year. time the blockers are right there. Lee shoved out of bounds at the 37. Well, I mean, this is a play we've been seeing. What's this third or fourth time we've seen it tonight? Works a lot better when the linemen go to the same side as the back, I have to say. But Amp Lee just picks his way and follows the blockers and just picks up those positive yards. Here it is, off the play action. Remember, they run that play a lot. Weldon works on it, retreats, and throws it. A little bit behind him this time, but he runs right by the block. Well, watch how he sets up the block right Oh, is that nice. Uses his people down the field. That's great running to use the people. Don't just plow through there. Use them. across the way by Mike Campbell. And one of the few times that you'll see, or we have seen tonight, Florida State in split backs rather than high formation. Split backs, and then what they run is a little sweep action to the weak side, but they like to run the short side of the field. They want to do it, even if it doesn't pick up a lot of yards, so they can throw out of it occasionally. They don't want to get the formation where it's just all packed. Bobby Bob, things didn't look so good for his ball club early, but they have really grabbed the momentum. Here they go, split backs again, and now they can throw and run. They got it in their mind. Weldon gets it away to Bennett. Flags go down, and that's going to be a clip on the play. Then we have a third flag that has come into the pile as Barlow was there defensively. Nice job by Casey Weldon here. Nobody open. Again, Dossie is a very aggressive player. He goes down, runs his pattern, but he comes back, and he comes back aggressively, and he's going to lay one on right here. And it was close, but he did not get his body in front of him. They're going to throw, everybody throws a flag on that. That's an easy call. The refs like to grab into the pocket right there. Yep, I got my flag on the ground on that one. Those are the ones everybody likes to throw on. This penalty's going to push it back to the 26-yard line. Nine minutes, 49 seconds left. Third period. 17 to 7, Florida State. And now what the Seminoles are going to have to do, they got to push it out to the 47 yard line to pick up the first down. They're also, even though they're not having great success moving down and putting any points on the board so far, they are eating up some time on the clock. You know, when Auburn came back against Tennessee, they put up points on the board right away. This time they've not gotten their hands on the ball. to Baker, and he cannot hold on at the 43. Corey Barlow really put the lumber to it. You're right, Corey Barlow did come back on that play and lay it on him. You know, when the guy catches the ball, you have to hit him aggressively. One of the problems with throwing the ball is they don't promise that they won't hit you. Fran Horn this time gets him and throws him to the ground. You'll take that. That wasn't vicious as it can get, but Horn hustling all the way. You'll remember that as a quarterback as the game goes on.
will take it across the 35 and close to the 40. Keith Jones on the special teams. Florida State leading by 10. The Turbo Wagon by Volvo. Think of it as a sports car with extra pickup. Unleashes B, a brilliant new videotape that draws more color and music out of everything it touches. New Sony V. Gary Danielson and Kevin Kiley from Auburn, Alabama. Third period, 8.44 left to play. And the Seminoles leading by 10. White has a man open and he overthrows Wasden who took a shot and now the flag comes down. Wasden took a shot to the head. There's no doubt he caught one here right in the face. I'm called for the ball foul, personal foul, called against Florida State. Number 44, John Weish, the backup strong safety is going to take this shot on him. The ball is thrown high. He does obviously does not have it, and he doesn't let up a bit. Puts his helmet right in his face right there. I think that's the reason for the immediate flag was the top of the head gear catching him. In, well, any place for that matter, but particularly a head-to-head -head blow. Let's go to Kevin Kiley down on the sideline. Ron, the Auburn defense is playing better, but the offense after the last series came over to the sideline. They feel they can beat Florida State. They have a tremendous amount of confidence. All they think they need to do is execute better, hold their blocks, and play the offense. They're ready to go. Back up to you. White's going to air it out on this one. Looking for Taylor. Incomplete. And what the crowd got upset about is he was looking over his left shoulder, and it had, had to reverse, look over the other, and they got tangled up. Well, Terrell Buckley did a nice job of here of taking Taylor out of his pattern. He gets beat. Now watch him just nonchalantly just kind of run into him. I'm sorry, that's interference because he was trying to come back and get to the ball. There was an opportunity to catch that ball, and Buckley did a nice job by just throwing him off balance a little bit. I misunderstood you. Did you think there was interference or not? I think there was interference on that play. It's a good job by Buckley, but it's still interference. You have to take the chance when you're beat. White. 6 of 14, 28 yards in the ballgame. Darrell Williams. And that's the first carry for him tonight, and I was beginning to wonder when we were going to see the guy they call Electron, because he is a little bit quicker than either Joseph or Danley. One back offense, one of the favorite plays everybody likes to run is the counter gap. They're going to bring these two guys right here. He's going to take a step and come back. The old Washington Redskin made famous play right here, and everyone in college football is running it. There it goes. The two big guys honk up in there, and look at that nice big yard as he gets a run on. This time, Darrell Williams ran into his blocker, Tony Richardson, and let's go up to Tim Brando for an update. All right, all the way up here to Connecticut. You're right, Ron. 24-20 LSU right now. 
has the lead. Brad Smith just scored on a one-yard touchdown run. That game in the third quarter, the boys from the Bluegrass making a comeback against Mike Archer's Tigers. Let's get back to Jordan Hare Stadium. Timmy, our situation is just under eight minutes to play in the third quarter. Florida State leading by 10, and Auburn trying to grab some momentum back. 15-yard penalty just a moment ago did not help the Seminole situation after a very nice stop in the first series. You know, I think what Kevin said is right, though, Ron. I mean, there's nothing magical that Florida State, as you can see, they're just a little bit short. Closer than that. It wasn't that far. But there's nothing magical Florida State is doing playing sound defense. They just, Auburn offense doesn't seem to be hitting on all the cylinders yet. Well, case in point, just a moment ago is Williams ran into Richardson, his blocker, rather that's, than that's being right. able to turn it out. Fourth down to going for it. The crowd will tell you. Tony Richardson, the true freshman fullback, bounces outside right here from the opposite side of the field. Gets it to him deep. He hits up in there and then bounces. Keep working. Keep working. You got to get across that line. You got to have it. This drive, they need a first down horribly bad. Richardson now four carries, 18 yards, and a touchdown. White gets blitzed as he throws it, and it is intercepted by Florida State's Leon Fowler. Had a lot of time on this, and he again tried to go too deep, but he gets hammered here, and he doesn't get the follow through. Henry Ostanewski puts it on him and drives him into the ground. Number 74, the ball flutters, and there it is. The interception, the only, only good thing about this is it ended up on the two or three yard line. Florida State gets the takeaway deep in their own territory. Smell the bread baking in every Subway store. Just follow your nose. If you're in business, you need advanced business systems because we offer you options. Lease or buy, copiers, fax machines, and mailing systems. And who else guarantees two-hour service from the time you call? Options, another reason to call advanced business systems. It's the new 1991 Acura Integra introductory sale. The 91s have arrived at Acura of Tallahassee. Right now, you can purchase a 1991 Integra RS at 1990 prices, only $11,950. Come in today and save. The stakes are high when top candidates roll for Bowler of the Year honor. The Lady Ebonite Classic, Thursday night at 10 Eastern on ESPN. is closing in on the Winston Cup Championship, but Dale Earnhardt is right behind him in the points battle. They fight for the checkered flag at the AC Delco 500, Sunday night at 8 Eastern on ESPN. 17-7 Florida State following that interception. Well, with Bobby's reputation, this ball may go anywhere on the field here. You may be right, Shannon Baker's in the ball game. He won the state sprint championship a couple of years ago. But they go straight ahead with the run to Edgar Bennett. It will be very short yardage as he tries the right side. Walter Tate, big number 76, along with David Rocker, there to collapse on him. The Auburn defense has done their part this half. I mean, they have not allowed Florida State to pass midfield. They've had great field position, I grant you there, but they have not given up the big play. It's just the Auburn offense just has not been executing at all. Screen to lead. Two yards, maybe three. That's Larry 
Patrick Young, who smelled it out nicely. Not too many times you're going to see a screen from your own end zone like that, but it's almost beginning to be like student body right for Florida State tonight. I mean, we've seen that play at least six times, and uh, it's been positive yards all but the time that the line went the wrong way. So the ball at the six-yard line, and if Florida State wants to keep this drive going, they've got to move out to the 13. Well, they don't want to turn over. Uh, uh, you know, they want to be careful with this ball. I'd see look for some type of a pick pass, maybe to the back of the play. Quick over the middle to Roberts, his tight end. It's going to be short of the first down by a couple of yards. Corey Barlow was there immediately. Well, they dropped back nice. They had good protection. The route was good. The throw was good. Only one problem. The tight end didn't go deep enough. You do everything right, and you have to punt the ball. That's not good execution. Rather than Shane Wasden, number 20, Herbert Casey, has dropped off as the single safety. Now, he's the one that had the good return against Tennessee to get things going. But yeah. this is a marvelous punt, all the way to the 34. Marvin Jones and the special teams, along with Sterving Palmer. And let's go to Kevin Kiley. Normally, Shane Watson would be returning that punt, but he was injured a couple of series ago. He got his bell rung. I spoke with the doctor. They don't know whether the starting receiver and kick returner, punt returner for Auburn, will be back in the game. He's still a little bit of woozy back upstairs. Thanks, Kev. Here's a look at Shane Watson on the sideline. He took that shot over the middle. Darrell Williams, Electron goes straight ahead and very short yardage is uh, Todd McIntosh, who's down at the bottom of the stack. Electron is a sophomore from Pritchard, Alabama, 5'9", 198. Has 232 yards in their earlier ball games on 60 carries, but as I mentioned, he didn't carry it back in the first half. freshman last year, just a sophomore, 5'9", 200 pounds, and he gives him a great change of pace out of the backfield. Coach Larry Blakely said he'd like to play him a little bit more, but he has to work on his blocking and the passes and catching the ball, but he, when he has the ball in his hands, is a threat and a real, real good offensive weapon. It's when he doesn't have the ball is the problem. That's the longest run of the game from the scrimmage. Well over throw, and that's Greg Taylor was the man he wanted. Well, Stan called an audible there, Ron, and he was confused. He called the wrong audible. It was a quick out to both people. The zone rotated it up. He only had two guys out for a pass, and there was no one to throw the ball to. You know, when you give a guy the, the, the room, the audible at the line of scrimmage, you have to live with some mistakes. I mean, he is still just a true freshman, and he's going to hit a couple of those down the line if as long as he don't coach him a little bit too much. Plain is a freshman. They had him around last year in a red shirt red season. Freshman. I'm but sorry. Still, as far as playing experience, he's exactly right. Draw play to Williams. Kirk Carruthers held on for dear life and saved big yardage. Tim Brando. Ron, after a touchdown pass from Marinovich to Gary Wellman, USC goes for two to get to within seven, trailing 35-26. Watch the chicanery. Marinovich making it appear as if. He's calling an audible. Then they snap it back to the backup quarterback, Shane Foley. His pass is incomplete in the end zone, 35-26. Arizona by nine, only two and a half minutes left. Pac-10 is whack. Last two weeks in a row, Tim, that uh, SC's been drawing him on the ground. Huh? Option play in the third and five, and Williams will have the first down. He gets belted down hard by DeAndre Clark. Stan comes out, 
Quick pitch. It was a pitch all the way. Watch a nice cutback right here. Right? Boop. Give the fake and cut back. Very nice. A little hold on Kirk Brothers on the left side. He's good, but whoa. Tillman here is going to come out and push it. Put one right on Marvin Jones. Spins around. Look at he still spins and has the presence to get his arm out there. Good job by Marvin Jones, even though he does get blocked. Williams hit in the backfield and knocked down for a loss by Howard Dinkins. Howard has played well this year, but tonight has been playing as kind of a backup as some of his teammates have been there ahead of him. We haven't heard his name a lot. You're right so far. Right then again, a little stumble. I mean, it, it's Auburn causing a lot of their own problems themselves. He, he catches it, he stumbles, and then, of course, all the timing is thrown up all, the, all to the wall. Williams comes out. James Joseph checks in. It is a second down for the Tigers at about 13. was the closest guy to it. You have to say he was the intended receiver. Larry Blakely, the gentleman bobbing in and out of your picture. Without the hat is Larry right there. Yeah. It, it, they call it offense by committee at, uh, at Auburn. With the Pat Sullivan, this gentleman, and also Pat Kai. Uh, the play was good. It was a good throw. He just threw it high again. It is third down. They need the 13-yard line. complete to Joseph at the 20, and he will be short of the first down by about seven yards. All right, a lot of people say, why throw the ball like that when you can't get a first down? They're thinking field goal right here. Remember, they're only down by 10 points. They put it in the middle of field. They got enough to feel comfortable kicking the field goal. That's only his, his second, second completion of the uh, second half. Two of nine for a total of nine yards. And one interception. That one made down at the three-yard line by Fowler. Von Weil to attempt the field goal. He's 6 of 10. His longest is 48. And this is an attempt of 37. He splits it. season coverage of the National Football League kicks off Sunday, November the 11th. That's when four-time Super Bowl champion San Francisco takes on the Dallas Cowboys. Mike Patrick and Joe Theismann will be there with all the action 8 o'clock Eastern time on November the 11th. Ron Franklin, Gary Danielson, and Kevin Kiley. Here in Auburn, Alabama, at a house that, well, with the exception of the second quarter when Florida State took them out of the ball game, and you, those people are standing up on the walkways. <laughs> uh, I guess they didn't like the seat that they had at the end zone or what have you, but 85,214, that's capacity. And, well, if you're going to bring anybody else in, bring your own shoehorn. Baker watches this one go into the end zone, and Florida State will take it at the 20-yard line. Eight plays, 35 yards on the field goal by John Von Weil. Jim Von Weil, I beg your pardon. 37-yarder is good, and it's 17 to 10. Again, that third and 13 call, I like that call right there. The chances of picking up the first down were great, so you put it in position to take three points. It's going to be a big three points. Man, I hope we don't get down to this tie game again here, because they got these cards and everything. I don't understand these two-point things. Average game in first down, Florida State, 5.4 for Auburn. 2.5. Short drop complete to Dossie. Breaks off the tackle and he will have the first down and move the sticks out over the 30. Dennis Wallace. We talked the about how it, we, we talked about how important it is to make the tackle on these short passes. Here it is, little five, six yard quick out. The ball's a little bit high. Look at that, how he's just reacts to these plays and turns up field. I love this guy after he gets the ball. Senior from Dilton, Alabama.
deep set of the play action. Now Casey going to run it. Out of bounds across the 40 to the 42-yard line, and it's Willis who was chasing it. And that is very close to another Florida State first down. You know, that doesn't look like much, but those guys he's running against out there are some great athletes. And he's got four or six speed, and that's what makes that possible. I mean, a lot of quarterbacks look good running the ball, but put him out there with all the great athletes that Auburn has, you look a little slow. Weldon looks right at home out there. Besides all the noise from the crowd, we have a battle of the bands oh, yeah. tonight. One plays, and then here comes the other. Well, Florida State's an experienced band. Though. They, they, don't, they play all year long, so this is stuff new. Now, the Auburn band, they're just learning as the game goes on. Sometimes they even play after the snap. Edgar Bennett brings it back in the other direction, close to the 50, as Corey Barlow will push him out of bounds. And all of you band enthusiasts who take exception, right, Gary, please. Not me. <laughs> I didn't say the Auburn band was inexperienced. Well, they don't know how to play quite as well during the game. This Florida State band for years played like this. Seventeen to ten, Florida State on top as we have left than a minute, less than a minute in this third quarter. Big drive for the Seminoles after Warren comes down against the field goal to cut it to seven. Drills it to Baker, and that's enough for the Florida State first down. The sophomore from Lakeland is tackled by Corey Barlow. Again, Baker goes just beyond the first down line. Weldon puts it right there. Good timing. They're in sync tonight with this passing game. There's no doubt about it. Matt Fryer, freshman from Live Oak, Florida, comes in replacing Shannon Baker. Starting so far this year, the freshman and Baker got the call tonight. And both of them have a lot of confidence in both players. Camp Lee, maybe one, and that's it. Ricky Sutton was the first man to come across and make contact. And that probably is the last play of the third period. Florida State certainly doesn't want to rush it up and try to run a play. That'll do it as we're about to head to the final 15 minutes of action with the Seminoles leading by seven. Only Sears Brand Central has all the name brand electronics you want. Like this LXI 2 Lux camcorder. Includes light attachment and telephoto lens. Only $799.95 at Sears Brand Central nationwide. Apparently, not everyone appreciates the strength of a Volvo. I burn with desire Each time my heart fans the fire To that old flame that burns inside of me of George Strait, brought to you by Bud Light. hiking, you better know how to read the terrain. First, trust your instincts. By all means, avoid distractions. Do your 
best to preserve the wildlife. Because street hikers don't just walk, they hike. Fresh shoes, Joe. Fourth quarter here in Auburn, Alabama. And it's Florida State on top by a touchdown. We have not seen the leading tackler since back in the first half of the Auburn Tigers. Cunningham will get an update on that for you shortly. Weldon zips it out to Lee and what a great open field tackle by Ramsey. Let's go to Kevin Kiley for this update. Ron, the uh, Auburn defense certainly could use their leading tackler, number 47, Carrick and Cunningham. He's behind this fellow in the plaid shirt. They've worked feverishly on him most of the game. Has cramps in the hamstrings. He has not been able to go back in the game, and I know it's hurting the Tiger defense. Back to you. Thanks, Kev. You might remember back in the first half as he was chasing Casey Weldon to the far side of the field. That's when he limped off, and now they're walking him to the Auburn locker room. pass interference as Lee turned around and pushed. I think he also. He pushed off. There's no doubt about it. He had good coverage. Weldon's doing a nice job getting out of the pocket, though, and finding somebody deep. It is pass interference. Defensive pass interference. My apologies to Amp Lee. Lee was sure of it, but I think everybody else thought it was offensive interference. There's the hit as he lets it go. It gets driven into the ground. But look at this. Who's pushing who right here? It's either a no call or it looked like at least offensive pass interference. There he goes. He pushes off big time. Should have actually caught the ball, right? And I think he was victimized by the crowd. Dead ball. Ball start. Offense. Five yards. First and 15. And see, he's having a few problems. Staying on site is just one of them. He's got a bad ankle that he's been fighting with all night, and he's staying in there. Cunningham he goes in one time, he comes out the next time. I think he's trying to loosen it up a little. I, I think that's what they're trying to do. Walden. Almost intercepted. Corey Barlow is spanking himself right now, and there was a lot of empty turf up that far side. He threw the ball way late. They had a little seam pass. Everybody goes straight up the ball. Weldon delivers it late, so he has to throw it to the hole, and what he does is throws it way behind him. Actually, if the ball wasn't tipped, Corey Barlow had the play. That's what he was so upset about. It was coming right to him, and he tipped the ball. His receiver saved an interception. Since that was the open side of the field, yeah. it, it might have been six. Eighth play of the drive. They go to the run to Lee and tripped up by Barlow. Boy, for a moment, it broke open, and then Barlow came from nowhere to catch him by the ankles, and now it's going to be third down for the Seminoles, and the line to make is the 21. Corey Barlow right here. He beats Dawson inside. Nice job by Dawson not to get the trip, but he beat the receiver inside and made the play. Third down, Seminoles. They need in the vicinity of 13 yards, and this group right here will probably let you know.
third down. Dossie's going to run the route. He's got man-to-man -man coverage. He's going to the post. But when he sees Weldon scramble, look at him go to the sideline just as he's taught. Puts it right there. And he could have had that pass. Dennis Wallace, I think, just got his hand on it. Throws it on the run. Let's see if Wallace gets his hand in there. Yes, he does. He does. Great job by Dennis Wallace to save a very, very big play. Andrews to attempt the 51-yard field goal. His longest is 43 this year. coordinator for the Auburn Tigers we talked with him about the difference in last year's ball game as far as Florida State jumped on top big in the first half 19 to 3 and defensively the Tigers came on strong in the second half but also put points on the board they had a chance last year for touchdown and two-point conversion to tie it as the clock went up but what his theory of defense is, yes, he's got an All-American at David Rocker. He's lost Rodgers, these other fine tackle, but he's still playing John Wilson, Fernando Hall, uh, Richard Shea, the backup nose tackle. He wants to win. He believes the fourth quarter's his. White gets the beat complete to Greg Taylor at the 48 of Florida State. Well, this Stan White's got nerves of a cat burger, and I'll tell you, he's been having trouble throwing the ball all night, so what does he do? Sticks it in between two zones right here. This is just a tough throw. Remember, he's had a couple intercepted. Look at it, right on the line, and he got the toe down. Beautiful job. just bring teams from behind. You know, he says he loves the way Joe Montana plays football. That's his idol. Of course, it's everybody's idol, even us guys that played in the NFL. But, I mean, he just is coming from behind and just throwing the ball so much better in the fourth quarter than he was earlier. James Joseph has the Auburn first down at the Florida State 36-yard line. This one so far with their ball game at 17 to 10, Florida State. Weldon, 15 of 24, 203 yards, one touchdown. White, 9 of 21, 56 yards, two interceptions. Florida State, 17 second quarter points. At time, McMillan takes the quick handoff as Auburn tried to cross him up with the quick trap. Marvin Jones stepped up into the hole to make the tackle. Boy, I don't know. S step up in the hole. Do you think we could recall that? I mean, he just filled up. You know what? Coach Erickson, Dennis Erickson from Miami, said this guy gets there in a hurry, and he gets there with a, in a bad mood when he gets there. I, I know what he means. I mean, he just lays a hit on everybody. Great way to describe how Marvin Jones plays football. Bobby Bob seeking his 200th career win. Joseph tripped up on the line of scrimmage, loses the ball. State football. From the other side of the field, Joseph gets his hand on the ball, gets it to him deep. But he gets tripped early, loses his balance, and out comes the football. It bounces around a little. Oh, nice catch. Nice way to get it grabbed right from those guys. The bottom of the pile, Simpson ends up with it. Got tripped up in the backfield. Carl Simpson made the recovery. Marvin Jones made the hit. 
turnovers. Auburn now three. Florida State two in the ball game. But how untimely was this one? And a huge drive, I think, for Florida State to wrestle some momentum back. it open and caught for the ankles by John Wyler. Boy, there's some feet right there. Right in the hole, he jumps by a linebacker, gets up to there, and then he accelerates. Nice run by Amp Lee. Look at him. He congratulating all his guys. Nice job, guys. I saw the hole. He takes it deep, cuts back. Sprint draw, cut back. Watch him. Oh, oh, he's by that guy. Puts, Ed puts a move on him, and he's into the secondary. Put a move on Larry Young, and all of a sudden he's into the secondary. 16 carries, 70 yards. This time will be dropped after a gain of a couple by Anthony Judge. Anthony, a junior from Fort Lauderdale. Anthony Judge is in there because of Cunningham's injury. They've been playing Willis and Judge. Then rotating them. Now the booze come up again as the Florida State champ begins. Wonder if they've got tennis elbow problems in Tallahassee. And all that, all those years of spending that arm. Spear elbow. <laughs> Weldon gets it out to Dossie at the 46. Boy, is, is he gang tackled, but the, he pushes it forward to within about one yard of the first down. I think they marked it forward progress back a little farther, Ron, and then they pulled the two forward, but I, it's at least two yards. Like the call. Second down, a nice safe pass. Give it to him short. Get it to your best guy. Somebody can run with the ball afterwards. There you see the Auburn guys going, oh, man, not again. Fourth quarter, we want to be national champs. Can we lose to these guys four years in a row? Now the last big game here at Jordan Hare Stadium. Auburn had to come from behind. Right now, they got a lot of work to do. Down by seven, Florida State moving the football. Dossie over the middle and short of the first down at the 49. Corey Barlow, and that is his 14th tackle of the night. Again, they're going to their money men. Lawrence Dossie here, he's going to go in motion, and he's going to come back under it. Get it to him quick, but they're in man coverage. And Barlow comes up. Everybody comes up. Push it back. Don't let him run for that first down. Good defense. Corey Barlow will be around again next year. He's only a junior. 5'10", 186 from Atlanta, Georgia. And he will sleep extremely well tonight. He has battered and also been battered. Well, he's had to chase this Dossie around all day. I mean, that's a nice work for anybody. John Wimberly waits for the snap and the layup game called against Florida State. Now that it's more than fourth and four, or it's fourth and one with the penalty, I wouldn't be surprised to see Auburn go for the block right here. Wonder if Bobby Bowden has enough guts to go for a fake right here. I've seen him do it in, in weirder places. Auburn Tigers do make personnel changes, but they've got the return on. Herbert Casey, no fair catch as a flag comes down, or did he make one as the flag comes down? Sterling Palmer on the special teams is down to make the hit. And now let's see what the flag is about because it was thrown immediately and normally that is from a signal of the fair catch and then advancing it. But this is going to be clipping against the Tigers. John Wiley gets him from behind. He pushes him and he clips him. Two penalties on one play. 8-17 left of the ball game. Florida State 17 and Auburn 10.
Napa, because there are no unimportant parts. Sony unleashes V. A brilliant new videotape that captures more color and draws more music out of everything it touches. Whatever you videotape, put more of it on your screen. New Sony V. Music and color to the highest power. Last week, my girlfriend broke up with me. Then she traded in her Toyota Corolla for this Eagle Summit. Well, did she give you a reason? Said she needed her space. So you got a $400 rebate. Yep, I got it when I bought my new Eagle Summit. Great, what do you plan to do with it? Just drive it when I want to go somewhere. ESPN's College Football Saturday, Florida State versus Auburn, is brought to you by Jeep and Eagle, a division of Chrysler Corporation. And by Budweiser, the king of ears. Remember, know when to say when. Well, I guess the best description of this day is what we've been calling it all day long, and that is Elimination Saturday. And teams in contention for the national title have fallen today. Miami was upset by Notre Dame, and I say upset. I think they were favored in the boggy. Tennessee was upset at home. Michigan was beaten again today. Flea flicker. White. Intercepted by Florida State. John Davis. Two flags are down at the 41-yard line, but they came down after the interception was made by Davis, his second of the year. There you see Stan coming off the flea flicker play. Didn't fool anybody. That's the fourth turnover of the game and his third interception tonight. Looks like they're going to attack on some yards on the back. They're going to attack on a big one. And, and Gary, the, the tough thing about this, and I'm sure you've been in the same situation, but that's one of those that you want so badly for it to work. But when you see three opposing jerseys down there, you can't throw that pass. Dead ball, personal foul, defense, first down. The flea flicker play. The design is to throw the ball downfield with the type of play, you know, you run action, you flip it back to him, you hope those safeties bite, but they just didn't bite. Stan got, fell in love with the deep pass and threw it with three guys around him. You're right. So 8.03 left in the ball game, and with the penalty, Florida State now with the ball just inside the Auburn 35-yard line. And it is incumbent upon this Auburn defense if they want a chance at this one tonight that they cannot allow anything on the scoreboard from the Seminoles on this drive. comes down as Weldon really takes a shot inside the 30. Eric Ramsey and Daryl Crawford combined with the stop, but offensive holding has been called against Florida State. They'll bring it back. Ron, the coaches on the Florida State sideline are absolutely livid about this holding call. You just have to imagine what they told their offense. Listen, don't lay the ball on the ground. No dumb penalties. Take care of it. Holding, offense, Letitia, first down, first and 20. So what do they get as a 10-yard loss on the first play when they're very, very close to, to field goal range? That's just something that, you know, it plays right into Auburn hand. Whoa. 13 penalties, 117 yards. You That's can bet that that gentleman will talk to his guys pretty sternly about that on Monday. Two, maybe three yards. Walter Tate. Let's go back to that interception again on the flea flicker. There you see it. They're going to hand off to this guy right here. He runs up, laterals it back to Stan White. And you got a guy coming across the field like this, and this guy coming deep right here. But nobody in the secondary bites on the play, and that's the problem. 
Snap it. Look at the secondary. He's backing up. It's a little too quick on the flip. Didn't give it a lot of time. And then he falls in love with the touchdown. And that'll happen. Boy, I tell you, you'd be so happy the play is called. It worked in practice. And all of a sudden, nothing. Walden behind Baker. Had him at the 30-yard line. And it's going to be third down. And Florida State needs to achieve the 25-yard line. But probably more importantly, if you're Bobby Bowden on the far side, they need to pick up about 12 yards to put it within a decent field goal range. We're sitting right next to the Florida State box, and they were livid about that penalty, too. And you're right. That's the reason. Three points almost puts the game out of reach. And now it looks like if they don't have a big play right here, they're not even going to be in field goal range. 16 of 26, 205 yards and one touchdown. They went with the Ruski. Left it on the ground, and the ball may have been recovered by Auburn. It is Auburn football. Walter Tate. of Bobby Bowden. They don't always work, but his kids love playing for him. Here it is. The Ruski. They're going to take the ball and lay it right on the ground here. All the action is going to be this way, and the guard's supposed to take it and run around here. They lay it on the ground, and the only guy that finds it is the guy from Auburn. Well, those plays aren't pretty when they don't work, are they? <laughs> yeah, they're, they're a masterpiece when they do work. Tennessee used it earlier this year. That's going to be procedure against Auburn, so they'll give up five yards, but they have the football, which to them right now is the most important thing. Good ball. Illegal snap. Offense. First down. I'd like to see Auburn go with the no huddle right now. I know there's 640 to go and there's plenty of time, but I want as many plays as I can get if I'm Pat Dye. They're stopping Florida State. I want to take as many plays as I can, get two chances to win the game, not just one. Now the officials calling a timeout because they're looking back up at the clock. Did some time go off it that on that false snap? Because that was a dead ball foul. You talk about the, the gambling of Bobby Bowden there. Why would you run a Ruski when you are ahead in a third down situation like that? Well, I think that's he just wants to win this game so bad. And it's a, it, you know, he thinks about these situations when it would work. Evidently, he thought third and long. He had an opportunity to run it with the big pass rush and everything. And, you know, that puts the game away. Well, that's you, true. If you do it right there, you win it. And, you know, you, you create legends with those type of plays. you got to have the... the the confidence of your own the security, though, to run those type of plays, I think. That's right. The 25 class, second clock is malfunctioning. It'll be kept on the field. So the 25 seconds will have to be kept on the field. And this is unfortunate for both teams. It's unfortunate for Stan White, especially. If they do go two minutes, it's nice to have that 25 second clock to be looking around because you there's so many other things you have to take care of. That's one of the things you just like to look up and see. So the situation, we've had a stoppage in play here because of the uh, clock and also because of the turnover. 6.41 remaining in the ball game. It's Florida State, 17 and Auburn 10. Auburn scored first tonight, and they had momentum going in their direction until the Seminoles wrestled it away from them and came back with 17 unanswered points in the second quarter. Auburn has come back with a field goal here in the second half, and that is how we stand. pass one of a thrown. Terrell Buckley had the cover but as much as anything just looked like he threw that one away. Well that's why you're right in the call. Buckley had him covered had Taylor covered and he just tossed it. Not a great night so far for Stan White. Nine for 23 56 yards and three to the guys in white. Stacy Danley will come out. James Joseph will replace him. White has it 
complete to Herbert Casey. And that is enough for the Auburn first down in Florida State Territory. Well, White hung in there on this one. He waited and he waited. Look at those nice, calm feet. He lets it go. A high again. But Casey goes up, lays out, and grabs it. Wow, what a good time catch by Casey. Incomplete over the middle, Greg Taylor. The Carruthers was right there. Carruthers had reversed on him and had a face right in his face. Florida State only brought three people that time, only rushed three on him and played the zone, and, and there was really no one to throw to. I'm a little concerned, though. Stan still throwing the ball high all night. There's your score by quarters. The 17 unanswered by Florida State in the second quarter. The field goal by Auburn here in the, or in the third period. 17-10. tell you what Bobby Bowden is not hollering at the officials he is hollering at his football team there you see foul look at that completely out of the play no need to do it puts the helmet in there too well uh, in the forearm more than anything but it well, uh, the helmet right to the back yeah. of the head right there That's, you know he probably even if he doesn't he hit him out of bounds anyway Mickey Andrews, the defensive coordinator, right just on. reading him the riot act. It is first down Auburn. New line of scrimmage to Florida State 30. On balance line. I think this is attack well or what? White's pass is complete to Herbert Casey. Breaks off the tackle, but it was enough momentum by John White to have pushed him back downfield, and that'll wind up as a gain of only three. Now under six minutes to play. It's not time for Stan White and the offense to be thinking about it, but somebody in that Auburn staff is thinking about what's our two-point play if we get it in the end zone. Joe Ostrzewski put the stopper on him, but let's see where they mark it. It's just inside the 21. Going to come in with the short yardage play right here. They got two cracks at it. Going to bring the big boys in. Third down and just inches. Gray and Baxter, all three tight ends of the ball game. Richardson breaks out the tackle.
one left to play. Pushing, pushing, pushing. Ed King. And Daly just takes it, jumps, dives into the end zone to tie it up. Stacy Danley scores, and his head coach had this reaction. Along the edge of San Francisco Bay, just off the Embarcadero, you'll discover the Fog City Diner. Elegant as a formal dining car, yet friendly as a Main Street cafe, where people reserve weeks in advance to taste the red curry mussel stew or the grilled chicken with roasted peppers. So leave your troubles behind, but bring your Visa card, because at Fog City, they take things easy, but they don't take American Express. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. Your Eagle Summit's roomy, but you used to carry all that in your Toyota Tercel. But now I also have room for my boots. Your boots? Yep. Here, boots. When are you going to get a sporty new Eagle Summit? Hey, there are other cars to consider. How about Toyota Tercel? How about Nissan Sentra? How about $400 cash back? How about tomorrow? Okay, Harry, grab the bud, and I think we're out of here. Right. I want to drink your bud. Hi, I'm Harry. So am I. Well, there you are. You are not going to believe this. This Halloween replenish your bud supply. Pick up Budweiser, Bud Light, and Bud Dry. What's your bud type? State 17, Auburn 17. You know, I have seen this script someplace before, about two <laughs> weeks ago. Well, we've been leading up to it when it got to be a seven-point game. I mean, I, I say go for two, though. I mean, but Coach Dye, he's had a lot of success over the years. He's got his own ideas. He gets the ball back, and they kick a few goal, they win. But if this game ends up tied 17-17, there's been a lot of people asking some questions why he didn't go for it. kickoff is coming down to Shannon Baker. Baker across the 25. Let's take a look at the top 10. This is what has happened already today. Virginia, one of the way first. Miami lost to Notre Dame. Tennessee lost to Alabama. Nebraska won. Auburn, Florida State. Jury is still out. Notre Dame defeated Miami. Illinois went over Michigan State, Houston over SMU, and Michigan lost to Iowa at home. We're going to see quite a change in the top ten come Monday. Dossie complete at the 40-yard line. a nice throw right there. Both fans are playing. The 85,000 people are just as loud as you can get. And well, the drop back and rips it right into Dawson coming across. Here's the replay. Look at it. Got the ball high. Checks up. Throws. Follows through. Catches one in the mouth after he lets it go and puts a strike right on Dawson. Well, they just have not been able to find a way to stop Dawson. This guy's just so tough as a wide receiver. He's just tough. I like that it was short a little bit. If I'm Florida State, it takes a little bit more time off the clock. Yeah, obviously, you figure you're going to pick up the first down, but it just keeps that much less of a chance for Auburn to have time to come back and kick the field goal. Clock running with 3.15 left in the ballgame. Roberts over 
over the middle, inside the 45, and he's down to the 41-yard line. Wow, what a throw. I'll tell you, you don't think Bobby Bowden has a gambler's attitude. Fumble Ruski on third down, second and inches, and he comes back. Watch, well, fit this one in. I mean, this is a rocket he throws. This guy's fairly well covered, and Roberts just gathered it. He knows he's going to get hit. What a play. What a call. Dave working on his second degree at Florida State. Academic All-American. And that guy right there, what do you say? <laughs> And he, I promise you, he will not play for a top. Well, he's got no choice right now. Well, I know it, but if the shoe were on the other foot. I, I, I agree. Well, he's got him deep. Overthrown inside the 20. It's Edgar Bennett, and they had worked him out of the backfield. Oh, a nice play right there. The tight end crossed, and the back coming out of the backfield, the fullback. That's a San Francisco 49er play that you see every week with Roger Craig going deep like that. Clock is stopped. 2.29 to the ball game. Both teams have all three timeouts left. It is second down Florida State at the Auburn 42. They got the matchup they wanted. The fullback on the middle linebacker, and just a little higher. He had nobody down there. There's no free safety or anything. Just a free throw for Weldon. Auburn comes with a blitz in the play. Dossie breaks off one tackle, or gets away partially, and takes it to the 35. Mike Pena on the tackle. Another youngster out of Merritt Island, Florida. You know, Dawson, it seems like he gets the ball more than the tailback does in an offense. I mean, they find ways to get the ball to their best player. I like that. They work very hard at saying, you know, it's hard to lead as a wide receiver, but this guy leads as a wide receiver. Eight catches. He had 13 last week, and eight again, eight or two weeks ago against Miami. He had 13 catches for 160 yards. Third down. They need the 32. his own recovery at the 36. He had the first down and had to retreat. Oh, my goodness. Now what do you do? Fourth down. Weldon escapes from two straight jacket holes. First of all, Rocker just, oh, arm over beautifully. He's got him. I mean, this is Tracy Rocker, an All-American. Look at him pull around him. Straight arm. And then you're right, he has a first down run, and he strips the ball. And the 27, Eric Ramsey. Oh, nice job coming back to get it. I think it's good. Pat Dye. Oh, my God. I got him. Sack. No. Oh, my God. First down. Another sack. Oh. Oh, no. How can he make a first down? <laughs> Let's take a break. 70 seconds left. Tied at 17. Your favorite team has come to town. Kenny Knox. Team Logos. Tallahassee's most complete sports outfitter. Now with an all-new lineup of fall fashions. Featuring the widest selection of professional sportswear. Also collegiate attire, novelties, and accessories. All at unbeatable prices. Your favorite team has come to town. Team Logos in the Kalern Public Shopping Center on Thomasville Road. Smell the bread baking in every Subway store. <laughs> Just follow your nose. I Top Rank Boxing on ESPN. The place where fighters have stepped into the ring as unknown, made the right connection, and emerged as champion. You gotta knock him off the wins, all right? Olympian Michael Carbajal. Lightning quickness has made him an undefeated world champion. He battles Luis Monzote as Budweiser presents Top Rank Boxing, Thursday at the special time of 8 Eastern, live on ESPN. Well, that's the story. 70 seconds left, tied at 17. Don't forget, at the conclusion of tonight's game, Gary and I will be selecting the piece of players of the game, one from each team. 
Well, two weeks ago, Tennessee and Auburn battled to a 26-26 tie. Auburn was down by 10 in this one. Not as badly as they were to Tennessee, but they have battled back to tie it at 17. Florida State with a fourth down and five. They have it at the 37-yard line. Last week, my girlfriend broke up with me. Then she traded in her Toyota Corolla for this Eagle Summit. Well, did she give you a reason? Said she needed her space. So you got a $400 rebate. Yep, I got it when I bought my new Eagle Summit. Great. What do you plan to do with it? Just drive it when I want to go somewhere. Decades before women fought for their role in the workplace or their right to vote, Mutual of New York sold the nation's first life insurance policy to a woman. It's that kind of innovative thinking that's provided 146 years of uninterrupted dividends for the present and annuities and pensions for the future of a new generation of mothers, daughters, and sisters and their fathers, sons, and brothers. Mutual of New York. Money for life. HBO's Hit Football Series First and Ten presents It's Your Choice. In this episode, while Bubba's enjoying some quiet, quality time, he's caught by Erlene, his wife. Will Erlene A. show some understanding, B. suggest counseling, or C. beat him with a bullwhip? It's your choice. It's irreverent. It's irresponsible. Only HBO would dare run a series like this. If you said C, you made the right choice. First and Ten, only on HBO. 104 to play, tied at 17. Pat Dye crunches on ice. And Jim Von Weil is hoping that he can have some ice in his veins. He is 7 of 11 on the year. I would say that Auburn needs to pick up about 12 yards to put him within close to his comfort range. And that would still be a 47-yard attempt. Junior from East Lansing comes up defensively. And Stan White goes immediately to call another timeout. The Auburn Tigers had all three left, so they still have two. Two timeouts for Auburn. Here's the scoring summary. They broke on top first. Tony Richardson, a six-yard run, 7 to nothing. That was back in the first quarter. Then the Seminoles unleashed quite a barrage in the second quarter. Richie Andrews with the field goal, and Edgar Bennett with a one-yard touchdown. They went on top, 10-7, to seven, and then Amp Lee, a screen pass from Weldon, 48 yards. But then Jim Von Weil cut it to a seven-point game with a 37-yarder in the third. And in the fourth quarter, the Auburn Tigers have come on to tie it. Stacy Danley with a two-yard run. And let's go down to the sideline and get a report from Kevin Kyler. Ron, Jim Von Weil is the kicker here at Auburn. He follows one of the great kickers ever in the Southeast Conference, Lynn uh, Lyle. He 
he kicked the winning field goal to Louisiana Tech to, uh, did, Tech to Jim Brown Wild, but he is not a proven commodity, just a junior. It could be a tough kick for him if it comes down to it. Well, his teammates get, can help him out quite a bit. That is, if they can pick up 10 to 15 more yards, they have 50 seconds to do it. And the ball batted down at the line of scrimmage, and I believe Bill Reagans, yes, the strong safety was up at the line of scrimmage, and Bill jumped high in the air and knocked it down. Five seconds used on the play. Down to 45 now. As Victor Hall, a junior from Anniston, Alabama, Senior tight end comes into the ball game and Pedro Cherry will come out. So it would suggest that Auburn will keep it on the ground on this third down play. Maybe. It is a drop play and Florida State is there to drop it for no gain. In fact, a loss of five as Troy Sanders on the bottom and Marvin Jones at the top combining to the hit. And Gary, what a decision now. This would be like a 55 yarder. 55 yard, the wind's a little bit in their face. It's coming from the side, the right side of the kicker, and it's going to be hooks it a little bit. It would not help him. But I think they got to go for it here. I mean, I haven't called any of these rights yet, so I don't know what I, why anybody's listening to me. Here you go, Marvin Jones again. I mean, this guy is, you talk about a big time player. I mean, he accelerates through his hits. Everybody falls backwards when he hits them. It's like Mike Singletary when he hits somebody out there. But it's a fourth down play. You got to figure they're going to go for it. Line of scrimmage is the Florida State 39 yard line. The line to make is the Seminole 31. 38 seconds left in the ball game. And Auburn with a fourth down situation. Well, as hot as they were with fourth down plays against Tennessee a couple weeks ago, you got to say this one's in the bag for Stan White. And for those who didn't see the ball game, what Gary's referring to is they not only scored one fourth down touchdown, they scored two. And actually on that one play when they scored the other one, they had scored the fourth down play before and they had a penalty, so they scored three straight times. This season, they're four for nine, and then in the fourth quarter, they're four for six. Here we go. to the middle of the field, but he lost some yardage, which I'm sure that Pat Dye doesn't care about him doing, but now the situation is set. The clock is down under 10, and Pat Dye is saying, go ahead and call the timeout, and they do, with six ticks left on the clock. Both teams will come to their respective sidelines to talk. What a finish. Stan White comes through again on fourth down. He hits Casey. I can do it when the pressure's on. That's the sign of a great one. Casey, beautiful throw. Right up high, he can catch it. He was wide open there, too. Ron. I'll tell you something. That young man almost likes to go over the middle. He and Dossie are two of a kind. <laughs> they don't mind bodies uh, coming at him in a hurry. You know, that's a heck of a number when you look at Auburn. Five of seven in the fourth quarter this year on fourth down situation. Tennessee, two fourth down touchdowns. You know, and, he, and he's just done it. I mean, this guy, you know, a redshirt freshman being able to stand in this type of a situation and do this time after time again. Well, here we go. I'm just going to watch this, baby. Jim Bonwile, 7 of 11, will let you watch, and the crowd is going to let you know if he is good or not. And he is kicking right into the faithful from Tallahassee.
there's the reason that Pat Nye didn't go for two points a while ago. And Wild hits it. It hooks a little bit. But boy, like it had eyes, right in the corner, just inside. And keeps their national title hopes alive. Look at he hits it. He's not sure. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Van Wiles giving it all the work, but the holder gave it away. He was looking at the referee. And the coach. <laughs> Two seconds left in the ball game. Dickinson will kick it off for Auburn, and he will kick it on the ground. That has been recovered by Florida State. And 